Hello, would you like to buy some? How much are they bought? They're three dollars, but these I sneezed on, so they're half price. You sneezed on? Just them? on these two. When did you sneeze on them? Today? Yeah. Hello, would you like to buy some cookies? No, thank you. You're right, the last thing you need is another cookie. I'm sorry? I said the last thing you need is another cookie. Yeah, looks like it's the last thing you need, too. Are you a scare? Yeah. I'm not supposed to sell them to pregnant women, though. that we can just sort of munch on. Cookie, You're looking at these cookies like you want to have sex with them. Pardon? You're looking at these cookies like you want to have sex with them. <laughs> no, we want to eat them. So sometimes eating cookies is like having sex. Oh, would you like to buy some cookies? Another bitch. <laughs> my table for a second. I really have to take a dump. All right. <laughs> Hello, would you like to buy some cookies? Um, how much are they? Three dollars. Three dollars. Or maybe you should get a scout salad instead. Salad? Yeah. What's a salad? I don't know, just a salad. You just don't look like you need some cookies. <laughs> Stuff out of order. What's going on? Same old shit. What's up, Foster? Wayne Reynolds. He said another bitch. <laughs> well, the good thing is you won't be able to hear his sex sounds. It's happening! It's happening! It's happening! It's happening! <laughs> what you up to? Not much. Can you hear? We're in a swap meet last week or um, Friday. That video you put out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I go to that one every year. Yeah. Do I anything? Yeah, uh, the post at the end of the video, mostly tools. Yeah, I gotta finish watching that. I got three, four, or five videos I need to finish watching. I know I got a whole bunch I try to watch, and then I don't too even. Busy. Too busy doing shit. It's hard to keep up. I try to click on them so they'll stay in my history, though. You know what I mean? So I don't have to go back and. Uh, Go back and try to look for everybody. I was saving them to watch later. Yeah, you end up with too many, though. 5,000 is the limit. I don't know how I ended up with 5,000 watch laters, but it happened. <laughs> it wouldn't let me put any more in. Yeah. So I need to go back and delete some or look at some. And I just need a. I got four or five that I need to finish watching that I done started at some point. I know I hadn't. I know I hadn't finished it if I didn't give it a thumbs up. You know what I mean? Right. That's what I try to do. I go back and be like, oh, no, I gave it a thumbs up, so I must have finished it. It's hard to cook and try to watch everybody's stuff. Try to watch everybody's stuff and then try to try to make videos yourself. I just watched your Ford video. Yeah. I thought I was gonna do be doing a repair on it or something to it, so I didn't even know what. To, I got home and finished out the video, and I was like, "The hell, I even what do I even label the thing as?" You know what I mean? Those brakes are probably dragging in the back. If that thing, that's the same platform that my F one fifty is built off of. Yeah. And th those trucks have plastic pucks in the calipers. Yeah. And mine were dragging, and I looked around, and nobody makes metal pucks for them, and nobody makes new calipers for them. Yeah. So I end up getting rebuilt calipers from Napa, and they've been fine for quite a number of years, but they're still plastic 
pucks, which didn't thrill me at all, but it's the only thing they make for it. Yeah. And I put those on there because, yeah, they were dragging. My front brakes were dragging so bad on that. What's up, 242 Auto Works? What's up, Wolf Wolf? Yeah, I had a, uh, uh, that's the first thing. The car had been driven, and I was looking at it. The tag went dead. Uh, August of last year. So I think it was like, uh, I say over a year. It's been over a year since it's been sitting. So shit like that gets rusty too and sticky, sticky. And I think once some gas runs through it, you'll be fine. Probably. I only drove, uh, drove it 15 miles. Yeah, Foster liked the UPS guy. <laughs> I had to wait on him to leave the fucking film the little clip. <laughs> Cause he's standing over there talking to me. Huh. We will figure it out. They just told me to get it the hell out of their yard, so it's out of the yard. I thought I was gonna go over there and have to do something to it, you know. Is that the last of the stuff you had to move, or? No, it wasn't my truck. It wasn't that. It wasn't that other house. That house has been sold since January. Oh, okay. I, I didn't quite figure out where that was. <clears throat> that uh, now we sold that house in January, and the other, uh, I got all my stuff out. I think my last when, whenever I got to Plymouth up here was Plymouth was the last thing to get up here. So whenever that video comes out, when I was completely done. That was just at another another place. It's just my, my old pickup truck, our old expedition. I used to daily drive it. I just don't care nothing about a Ford. It runs good and drives good. You know what I mean? I drove it every day and, I, and somebody offered me some money and I looked at like, hell, that it, you can have it. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do again, too. I got too many cars. I don't need another one. I thought I was, like I said, I thought I was going over there to do a repair. I went to make a repair video why it won't run or whatever. But hell, damn thing just didn't have no gas. I have no gas in it. Probably had a little bit of gas in it, but it's sitting on a hill uh, back then. You know what I mean? And yeah, so that. The gas gauge was full and then went down to three quarters. That's weird. Well, that's because I because of the truck was sitting level then. Go level. Cheers. Cheers, gang. When I when I where I used to live at, the driveway sat like this, so my truck sat on the on the hill. And if I if I pulled in, it was uh the gas gauge it would it would go down. If I backed it no, yeah, if I backed it in, it would go up because of the way the gas would lean, you know what I mean? So it had some gas in it, but it didn't have enough to get up to the pump to run. And I think the other day when I tried to start it, it started up and ran, and then whatever was in the pump run out. And I got to do it. Wasn't touching no more gas. Yeah, I got to do it. Will it run on my Crown Vic? That thing, it sat around and it won't start now. And I think the pump seized or something. And they said you can go underneath there and beat it with a rubber mallet beat the tank yeah. yeah so i'm going to give that a try because i put a pump in that thing that's what i would do you probably you probably do that and then and then actually drive it start driving it you know periodically if it, if it runs off that if you do it and it runs it'll probably be fine you know yeah, it, it has a replacement pump in it that that crown vic is a pain in the ass to get a pump in there i, I ended up taking the tank out and putting it in but yeah. there are people there's way you People can finagle up and get to that pump without taking the tank down. It's hard to do, but if oh, I had to do it again, I'd probably do that. And that, that thing, Go ahead. I'm sorry. It wasn't easy. The, the bolts that hold the tank in, Ford had problems with those when they get rear-ended. The, the bolts would puncture the tank and they'd explode. Yeah. So they came up with these bolts that have a have like a little thinner area in them yeah so, so and you have to when you put the 
after you bolt it up, you break off the bolts and the, none of the bolt sticks out past the nut hardly anymore. Yeah. But when you take the tank out, you can't get it back in because you need a longer screw to get, you know, the straps all started and cinched down. So I had to buy these bolts. They're like $20 a pair or whatever. Yeah. From the dealer and bolted them up and, you know, ran the nuts down and then broke them off like they were supposed to be. What a pain. Right. And a uh, Cadillac that I got, it's, you go in the, uh, pull all the carpet out in the trunk and there's a access panel on both access panels. That makes sense too. All the love out of it. Yeah, I, I, when the, when I was working at the auto shop and we had to take the, uh, we had to drop the, the, the car come in, it's an identical car. It was, it was a black one, but it was a identical car, same year and everything. And the, uh, uh, they hit something on the interstate and immediately pulled over and shut it off. You know what I mean? And seen the oil poured out of it. So they was like, you know, we're not going to drive it. They had it towed, you know, and had it towed to the car shop. And uh, we told them, you know, it could be blown up. We don't know, you know. And, you know, well, what can, what can we do? I said, well, we can, we can put, a, put an oil pan on it. But if it's blown up, you're going to pay us to put that oil pan on it to find out. They said, do it. And then we had to drop the whole engine transmission, the, the struts, the cradle, the whole fucking thing out. You know what I mean? Pour the whole front end of that Cadillac part. It wasn't nothing left but fenders and a bumper hanging off of it. And uh, I saw, I saw why the Cadillac has the uh, the access panel for the fuel pump. Because you'd have to drop the whole rear end. I mean, they don't have a rear rear end, but you'd have to drop all the whole suspension and everything out because the gas tank's under, underneath all that. You'd have to remove everything on the back of the car to get the gas tank out. So they had to put the access panel in the in there. Foster, I think it's a, I think it's a '98. I think it's a '98 expedition. I think that's a fucking title right here. It's been some years ago since I since I owned it. I don't remember. It's a '98, 80 by hour. What's up, mud digger? But yeah, we tore that fucking Cadillac all the way apart and put the oil pan on it and. And uh, put it back together, and the fucking thing was fine. They shut her, shut her down when they figured out, you know, pulled over and shut it off, you know, got out of the car, you know, which I probably would. I probably did the same, depending on where I'm at, you know. If I'm in a bunch of bullshit, crazy traffic, I'm not going to try to, you know, uh, I'll risk the engine before I'll, you know, get in some kind of unsafe situation trying to get it over to the side of the road, but. They was able to, and, and we put the damn Cadillac back together, and, and uh, it had a uh, didn't have no knock or nothing, nothing. And then by the time we got it put back together, it then got some new hoses and some new gaskets and engine cleaned up, and you know what I mean. So it got spruced up a little bit too before we got it put back in there. You gotta show me your face, Foster. Just for a second. Okay, you can turn it back off, you other mother. Hey, sorry about my hair. It's just all over the fucking place. Yeah, like like fucking uh, Dennis the Menace. Yeah, eh, can, a little bit. Can of gas and a match to do it. The guy coming out there the other day when I was with hmm. him, he said, he said, "What's wrong with it?" I said, "It's a fucking Ford." He said, "Huh?" I said, it's a fucking Ford. It says Ford right there on the front of it, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> he said, but what's wrong with it? <laughs> <I> said, <laughs> he said, you fix it, I'll buy it. I said, okay. Let me see if I can fix it. The only bad thing is it's getting oil in the cooling. So it's either got head gaskets or the external oil coolers are bad. One or the other. Is that a 4.6? I think it's a five four. I think it's got the big one in it. So those things have an oil cooler like on that diesel that John Showcar Builder has, where if the oil cooler goes bad, it'll mix with the coolant. Some of them, some of them do. Some of them do. It's saying that what I'm reading, if it has the tow package on it, it does. And I'm guessing it being an eighty Bauer edition, it kind of does have the tow package on it. So it's basically what I was looking at. It don't it don't run to the to the uh, it don't run to the radiator. The 
Trans the only thing that runs to the radiator is a transmission cooler, and it's got a new radiator in it. I put a radiator in it a couple, three, three years ago. What year is that damn thing? Huh? What year is that damn expedition? 98. Oh, shit. What I was looking at, it's got a, you got the oil filter housing adapter and then an oil filter on it, and then there's two lines that come off that go into the cooling system, and they don't go to the, to the, uh, uh, to the radiator. So if that's bad, yes, it can be putting it in there. Motherfucker runs great. You know what I mean? I don't know if the truck it. has that type of cooler or not. I have to look at it next time I change the oil. It might. If it's got a couple of lines coming off of it, a supply and a return, it might. That one garage. Go fuck yourself. Oh, shit. Robert's in here. We're going to find out. We'll put some fucking stop leak in it and drive it. Some hog trigger. Or sell it, sell it, for, or sell it for parts. I ain't no fruitcake. Sell it for parts. It said fruitcake. I drove the damn thing for, I don't know, a long time with it. That's with that problem. As long as we made sure it kept oil in it. Once at one time, I took it. break your WD forty. It'll be fine. I took it, drained all the coolant out of it, poured it in a bucket, waited till the oil rat rose to the top, and I scooped the oil out, and then poured the coolant back in. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Coolant ain't, ain't fucking cheap. You know what I mean? Right. I did. I was doing that. My buddy's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I said, "I said I'm gonna save his coolant." He said, "It's got oil in it." And I said, "It'll go. It'll fucking separate." Yeah, it don't make. And that stuff, that stuff costs too much to dump it out on the ground and go buy some more, especially if it's gonna do it again. Right. Yeah. Um, coolant eating vehicles, or no? It's making coolant because it's putting oil in with it. It's making you the milkshake in the yeah. riding. That's better than the engine. Mix it up on nice and deep, like. That's better than in the engine. Mm, yeah. Whole lot better. <laughs> what I was reading, it's got a high pressure oil pump and it's got more it's got more oil pressure than it does coolant pressure. So it don't. Even if it is a head gasket, it don't go the other way. Yeah. And it's got some good clean oil in it, because I guess because it's done been changing itself. <laughs> And it was full too, so that's good. I wish I could have watched it though. It's nasty looking. Looked like it's been sitting by the lake. Right, right. Looked like it was a zombie vehicle used in the movie or something. Yeah. Been sitting uh -oh. for twenty years under a some kind <laughs> yeah. of tree. <laughs> you want to know what's fucked up you say about the zombie? It's got some kind of fucking license plate on the front of it. It's some kind of quarantine zombie something. And, and it's got a sticker on the back of it that goes with that. And the trailer hitch has got some kind of biohazard something. You know what I mean? That was, that was the theme they was going with it. Like it was a zombie apocalypse vehicle. Right. <laughs> It did have a fucking uh, like a zombie hand on the rear windshield wiper. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's funny you said that because it, it was done up like that. All it needed was some lights, put some lights on it, lights on bar lights on the back of the front, and cage up the window or something. I just I just watched the video on it. Yeah. Saw the the zombified. Expedition. It's only got a uh, two hundred twenty-five thousand miles on. <laughs> Why? Wow, shit. <laughs> Foster's wanting to buy it. I heard him. He's yeah. I didn't know I was a window lurker. He's a window lurker. Oh I'm, no! Are Are you going to say I'm a I'm a peeping tom? I don't know. You got your eyes all bugged out there, bud. You do. You do. You look like a peeper for sure. So, like the, so the other night when I ordered that little hood on them or thing, 
I ordered one. And I was like, okay, it's going to come to my house. And then I was like, well, fuck, I should have damn sent it to his house. So I just ordered another one. I was like, fuck it. I'll have one and he'll have one. So okay. Mine come in broke. Yours come in not broke. What's up, no, mine come in. Mine come in broke, but I was nice, and I just I didn't oh. I didn't want to bother nobody. I got you. Yeah, man. I glued it. I glued his deal back on. Yeah, yeah. And then it had a little tip of it that was broke off too, and I all the parts were there. And shit, I I buy super glue by the value pack, you know. Right. <laughs> so super glue works on it get it glued where it'll hold it and then drip a little bit on top of it and it's stout yeah why didn't you just weld it because it's not made out of metal yeah yeah it's, <laughs> it's some of that it looks like metal but it is uh Plastic. resin yeah. yeah it's the it's the same exact shit that this little guy's made out of yeah it's just they painted him silver I, I bought so much stuff off of eBay, and I've got a, uh, you know, I ain't sold anything, which I just now started my store. I hadn't uploaded anything, but I'm gonna start an eBay store. <laughs> so much yeah. shit I don't need and don't want, you know what I mean? But oh yeah, my uh, what do they call it? The uh, review section or whatever, you know what I mean? I'm like at a hundred, and they can look on there and see everybody's done. Oh yeah, he's good. He this, this, that, and that, or whatever. I even I, I sent them a message and said, hey, I ordered two of these. And one of them come in broke, and I sent them a picture of it. Yeah. They said, they said no problem. We'll refund you the money. Oh, sweet. I should have I I sent you a picture of this one broke. If I would have known. <laughs> yeah. The same fucking way with the, with the hair broken off of it. The, yeah. It, it, no, it was just broken off. It didn't have a piece missing off of it. But uh, yeah, come in the same fucking way, and I sent them. They sent my money back. They need to throw a little extra styrofoam on top of it. Yeah. Which I don't, I didn't understand. They, I sent them the message on the one that I ordered that come to my address and they refunded the money for yours. Uh, for that, that ad, you know what I mean? I was like, whatever. I don't care. Right. You know, they, told me, they said, uh, they told me they would refund me. No need to send it back. We'll refund you after you give us a good review. I said, no. I said, I give you a good review. That closes it out. You know? Yeah. And I said, if you want to refund me, I said, I, I said, that's fine. I said, I'll give you three days to refund me. I said, and then after three days, I said, I'm shipping it back to you. And they have to pay the shipping back and stuff because it's right, much, right. Much back guaranteed. You know, I don't even got to print out a label. I just say, I'm going to return it. And uh, eBay sends me a, a, a QR code. And I take the QR code. I can either print out the label myself or take it to the post office and show them my phone. They scan my phone and print out a label and it's gone. So yep. as soon as they yeah, got that cool thing about that. Yeah, as soon as they as soon as they got that message, they refunded it real quick. Good. Yeah. The, Robert, the, those freaking sons of bitches. Robert said he's quitting quitting YouTube again. Woody's been bullying him. <laughs> oh shit! How is how has Woody been bullying, bullying you, Robert? He's been freaking chopping wood with that damn wood chopper. Yeah, yeah. He's dreaming of putting bodies in it. I want to get the Roadrunner horn from my Plymouth. Me, me. Uh, it ain't no Roadrunner, but I'm gonna get me a horn for it. Beep beep. You're better yeah. off getting a train horn for it. Now, like those train bears. horns. Train yeah. horns are highly, highly sought after. All right. I might go deaf. I'll be blowing that sucker at people all the fucking time. Oh, shit. Now, you somebody call your ass in. Probably. <clears throat> I had a, a truck I was working on that had one on it, and... Uh, Man, this guy would ride his motorcycle by my shop door every day, just wide open, you know, big old street bike. And uh, so I knew about what time he did it every day. It was like when he was leaving. So I just kind of hid out there in that truck. Man, he come getting ready to haul ass by me. And right when he got to the front end of the truck, I hit that train horn. <clears throat> 
I've never seen somebody come so close to laying a bike over and save it. <laughs> it was hilarious. He was pissed, but it was funny. Have a good night there, Redhead. Oh, hey, hey. It's late. It's late. How, how late is it there? It's 825 here. Yeah. Must be around the world or something. The Celtic goddess. Yeah. Who knows how late that is there? That damn Cadillac's got like, I forget when I had the bumper and bumper and the, the, the uh, fender and stuff off of it. I figured it was got three horns on it. Or if it's got four horns on it or something, it's got a bunch of horns on the thing. Yeah. Two on each side. Okay. Rav4 got a frame. Rav4 got. Yeah. Uh, hey, kick Rav4 in the gonads for us next time you see him. Yeah. 1.25 a.m. there. He's on the other other side of the pond. Yep. I got a question. Are, are we going to kick him in the crumpets? Yeah. <laughs> Ruffle his crumpets up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So out of order, man, there was some amazing stuff at that swap meet. It's a good one. I go there every year. It's 115 yeah. miles each way. But Oh, wow. Okay. I'll just hop in the truck and go. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, There's one down south of Tulsa just a little ways, which is about an hour from here. But it's called the the early model Ford swap meet. Um, I'm, I'll go to it this year. It's a it's a pretty big one. Well, yeah, I found some tools. Some yeah, tools. heck Good yeah. Parts. The one one of my friends was there, and that's I got good price in the Oldsmobile stuff. Five bucks for a distributor. That's yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't even bargain with him. You know. <laughs> He said, she said, well, this, the second person to mention crumpets on a live tonight. <laughs> oh, Foster gets that award. Tea and crumpets. Yeah. Tea and crumpets. Yeah, I don't know. The pretty, pretty cool uh, bunch of stuff though I, I like those swap meets where you can go and get good deals everybody doesn't think their shit is gold plated right and some stuff if it's too high i just move on but a lot yeah. of yeah the boxes you know a lot of good like the crescent wrench the guy said five bucks on it it's so cheap i couldn't even bargain with him i just said, heck no you can't buy one at lowe's for that yeah suckers are 25 bucks yeah you get ripped off yeah, ripped on one or the other. At uh, yeah. I what I wish you would have uh, walked over to one of the Rochester fuel injection units they had and and shown their the price tag on them. Oh yeah, they that guy has that same stuff there every year, so I kind of kind of blew by it. Yeah, that's just cool stuff that like for other people out there you don't see that shit very often old mechanical fuel injection that come out in the 50s neat stuff <clears throat> well, i got all dang it, you mean. got your body work done and the jams painted on this green truck but oh, I did still didn't put the freaking door back on it. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So you're going all out painting jams and everything? I just I just painted what I repaired. I burned it in below the striker bolt and uh, below the front door hinge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think some I mean, of these guys, they use something out of a spray can when they blend. Yeah, yeah, to melt it in. It into the old paint. Do you use that stuff? It's uh, all it is is just like a really slow evaporating reducer. So I have some of it that's in a can. I have some of it that's in a gallon can that you spray out of a gun. 
I have a SATA jet mini jet that that's all it's ever sprayed out of it. It's whole life is a uh, blending agent. So Vino, does that stuff really help? Um, yeah, yeah. Cause your overspray from your burn in just lays there. All right. So if you let it dry, it's going to look like a paint job that you just stopped right there at that spot. So when you prep it, you have to like, I'll take, thousand grit and sand up to the point where I know I'm going to stop clearing. But before I sand anything, I'll run over it with some really uh, like cutting compound and I'll compound that whole area really, really good. And that gets you nice, fresh, clean paint and you clean it up good. And then I go back and do my sanding and everything. And then when you do your, your paint job, you do your color, you blend it, and then your clear blend has got to be well past any overspray, right? So you go out there and first coat of clear just covers the base coat up, the overspray from it. And then I have my blend set up for the clear coat out a little bit further. And that final coat of clear, I'll make sure that I make a clean pass where it's got as straight a line as possible, not a ton of just fogged off overspray and then you come back with that blending agent and i'll spray a coat over the clear and the overspray from the clear i'll walk away and go burn one i'll come back in and i'll hit it a second time and then let it dry for 24 hours or if i'm baking it i'll let it bake for 20 minutes and then I pull it out and you just take a polish pad then with polish and you work back towards the overspray from the, the rest of the panel that you burn it in on. You like the unpainted part, you know, you're, you're taking off overspray. Right. I got you. You just go back in, you polish the overspray off and you try not to compound or polish right over where you just burnt that in. Cause it's thin. Yeah. And it'll last for, well, if you do it on the outside of a car, probably eight, nine months, and then it'll kind of start to show up. And then after a year, you'll have to go back and polish over it continuously then. Um, it's not a warrantable procedure to do, but it's it used to be really common to do it. And then insurance companies were like, no, nope, we'll pay you to paint the rest of the panel to a break point where you can mask it off. Yeah. But on them jams and stuff, hell, it's not going to get any UV on it. So it'll, it'll live forever in a jam. Yeah. I, I showed the kids at school. I did a, uh, it was a Chevy four door truck and it was white and the rear door had a little spot of paint that was peeling on it right below where the window rolls up and down on the main part of the door. And I, I took that and prepped it all and we based it and blended the clear and I melted the clear into the door and buffed it and made it where I just painted a spot, maybe a 12 by 12 area. And the rest of the door was the factory finish. It's like, yeah, you can, you can do this, but here's the problem. If you do, it's gonna, it's gonna show up later. This is you yeah. car lot work. I had never done anything like that, but I did a uh, like the corner front corner cab on a on a pickup truck on a Chevy pickup truck, and you got the body line that's kind of sunk in, recessed in. Yeah. And so I went, to, I went up to the top, just just below where the like the the bed comes down, and this this starts to turn in and into that indention. I, I taped, I backwards taped it. You know what I mean, yeah. instead of line, I backwards taped it after I prepped it and then we just painted that one section up to it and then just sprayed up to the tape and pulled right. it off and where it, where the, the panel bends, you never say that little bit of mine. Oh yeah. Right. Cheers, it's, Cheers. it's not too tough to do, but it, it can uh, save a bunch of time and a bunch of prepping and painting stuff on something that you're not going to keep or it may not matter that much. Right. Um, 
a video that I just posted with the guy with the 57 truck. He had welded in rust repair patches on both of the fit front fenders. And you know, Cheer, I, told him, I was like, I can, I can paint that and uh, make that color actually match and look like that. It was like, yeah, but then we'd have to say that this was painted on that truck and there's nothing else on the whole truck that's been painted except for where they hand lettered the stuff on the doors and things. They'll just WD-40 it and keep the metal clean, he said. Like, okay, it's your truck. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> if wax on it, it'd probably be fine. Yeah, hell, just it's such a small spot. You can just spray it with WD-40 and use a red scotch Brite on it, and it'd be all right. You started like the this. Years ago, I was patching up one of my cars, you know, and the places where I do the work or where it was rust work, you know, spray primer on there. But then the primer, you know, was is porous, and it would rust through. Yeah. And that didn't look the best. So I said, you know what? Let me get some gloss, light gray spray paint. Right. So when I did those spots again, I just spotted them over with that. It looked like primer spots, mm. but it never rusted again. And I didn't care if it was, you know, half primer spot looking and half blue or whatever. It didn't matter to me. I wasn't, you know, I just wanted something that would look better and not rust. So that was my low buck trick. Right. Woody! Cheers! Cheers. He said he's quitting lives and quitting YouTube and oh man, gonna go be a monk. <laughs> Live in the Italian Alps and be a monk. Yeah. Oh wait a second, he's gonna be a groundhog. <laughs> Eat crumpets and drink tea all day. Oh jeez. The the gloss paint it uh it. It's not as porous as the primer is, right? So your primer's got talc in it usually to make it sand better. So it kind of absorbs the moisture. Yeah. You started on the other side of the rust repair? The Oh, I took what I had left and I just poured it down and let it run inside and down and then i'll go underneath the truck and brush epoxy over my weld seams and then seam seal them and undercoat it yeah we'll yeah. The wood chipper. then we'll we'll fill it full of uh wax <laughs> after that that cavity wax stuff woody yeah Woody the wood chipper. Right. <laughs> he is. How much wood could a wood chipper chip if a wood chipper could chip wood? Yeah. Well, he could chip all of it. And I'm telling you that much. That's a pretty good sized pile that he went through there. Oh, yeah. I was thinking, what the hell are you going to do with all that? Yeah. I could have burnt all through that stuff. chipper. I'd have had a bonfire and I would have burnt every bit of that shit. I wouldn't have rented the chipper. I would have burnt every bit. Not at all at one time. But oh, shit. I would have considered it until it was all burnt and, and then cleaned up a little small pile. I wish I'd yeah. had a video way back when. We cut all these cedar trees. Oh, yeah. Down in the front and piled them up in the back. So they were kind of fluffy, you know, they because they still had the green on them. And I set that pile on fire, and it got some Venturi effect going in it. It started roaring. Yeah. 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 And you could just watch that pile in, like, less than a minute. It just pulled all itself all the way down to the ground because it got super heated. It was mm -hmm. the coolest thing I'd ever seen, but it was before we had cell phones, you know. And yeah. Got super video hot. Or anything. It got fucking super hot really quick. <laughs> yeah. I take them... I've got a few cedar trees I've left on my property and I, I keep them trimmed. I've got, I got one that the whole side of it's cut off of so I can hide behind it uh, and watch deer. Got another one that's trimmed up with a deer stand up in it so you can hunt deer because they smell. 
and it's hard for deer to smell you if you're in oh, one of them okay. cedar yeah. trees. So they make they make really good cover. But when I trim them limbs off of them, I'll uh, I'll put them in my burn barrel, and oh yeah, man, that's crazy how fast that stuff burns. <clears throat> Just green as it can be, and it goes up big time. We cleared. Yeah, if Rosen had all that wood, he, he wouldn't be able to burn. He neighbors would be like, what the fuck was that? I thought a fucking house burnt down. <laughs> He'd have the whole county, all the all the fire trucks parked out there. Yeah, they well, could burn accidentally burn that derelict looking house down that's over there though yeah where where i did live at uh i have a fire all the time and it seemed like you know you could go all week and not hear a fire truck and just as soon as i go out there and light my fucking fire i mean within five minutes it is like oh fuck, here they come and yeah. they, never, they never did come one fucking time but it seemed like like clockwork i go out there and light the fire they get the rage and the next thing i know i'm hearing the fire truck i'm like and they're, and they're coming. You hear it getting closer and closer and closer, and then you hear it keep going away. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I started a, a fire out here, and uh, one of my neighbors called the volunteer fire department out here. It's like, what the, what the hell, dude? I'm just burning brush. You know, it's a big ass brush pile, but I'm burning brush. I started it with uh, like a gallon of motor oil and a gallon of lacquer thinner mixed together. Yeah. Just burning, burning stuff. And the I'll, fire department the guys, they all, they all know me. So they, they come up here and uh, they got my neighbor over here and they were like, you realize he pays dues to the volunteer fire department and you don't. And you made the call. So we're going to send the bill for the trucks to your house. <laughs> and they're like, huh? And said, yeah, it's $2,500 per truck that shows up. Right. And, you know, and they're all old buddies. So there's three trucks out there and the people are starting to freak out. And they finally, he was like, okay, we're going to let you off this time. Oh, yeah. You need to talk to your neighbors. Shit, I was, I was real young and I, I come, I come home from work. And uh, and I come down, I come down the street, and I'm like, damn, it's fucking that neighborhood is smoky a little bit, you know. And so I get closer to the house, and I pull in the fucking driveway, and oh yeah, there's a fire in my backyard. And uh, Dad had done, he done pulled up some carpet and replaced some carpet, so he's burning the fucking carpet in the, you know, pile out back. And he's not, he's not even at home, you know what I mean? He, he thought it done went out, and it done started smoldering, and you know, oh, so. Shit. I pull in the driveway and I'm thinking, oh, fuck, this damn smoke's coming from here, you know. And I don't want to get out of the truck and I hear the fire department, you know. And here they are, they're pulling in behind me and they let me have it. They gave me a fucking man. I was young, so I didn't know to say anything back. I just, I'm sorry. And I put it out, you know. But dude, they gave me a mouthful over that fucking carpet. So when daddy got, daddy got home, I gave him a mouthful. I said, we don't have the fire department over here and every fucking thing. <laughs> He said, oh, shit, I thought I put it out. I said, oh, you didn't put shit out. He oh, just, man. He just laughed and went on. Yeah. Yeah, my my dad's got a big burn pile, and it's just kind of in a little shallow ditch, and it's a uh, hay meadow, the rest of it. I don't know. There was one day he went out there, and he was going to burn this brush pile, and uh, it's summertime, so the grass is green. So he doesn't think anything about it. He lights it, and then the wind picked up a little bit, and uh, man, that green grass started burning. And then it he couldn't put it out, and he freaked out. So he ended up having to call the fire department on himself. But it burnt all the way across his pasture and burnt like three of the neighbors uh, have giant cedar trees right on the property line because the the people that lived there before i used to ride motorcycles all the time and i i had a dirt trail around there and it was always dusty so they planted all these cedar trees to stop the noise and the dust and dad burnt three of them down uh, 
I never saw old man years ago. He took and raked up his yard and he raked it as a ditch in front of his house, you know. And we're in a residential area, you know, and uh he raked all the leaves into the ditch and, and uh you know, struck a struck a match and lit the shit on fire, you know. He oh, grabbed, he wouldn't grab the fire hose fire hose. I mean no, not the fire hose, but the uh hose pipe, whatever, turned it on, went out there, he's gonna keep it under control. And it, and it was, you know, his yard going into the, to the street. But he like he lit all that shit on fire. Here comes the fire department. You know what I mean? And they started getting on to him. And he's like, "Look, somebody threw a cigarette butt out, and the fucking shit lit up. I'm trying to put." <laughs> That's what you gotta have is that that quick thinking. They let the shit burn. They stood there and talked to this man. It was Jimmy Ho, and he was a councilman in here in Davidson County. And he had his own TV show on the public broadcast network, and he was friends with Bill Dance and all kind of shit. Worked for the Tennessee and the big newspaper here, and so he knew what to tell the man, you know. Oh so that, shit! That, I've heard about that guy. Didn't he take you fishing? No, we wanted to go fishing with him. He passed away, but uh, he uh, uh, he damn told him he said that, and somebody threw a cigarette, but I'm just trying to put it out. And he's like, oh, yeah. don't worry, don't worry about it, Jimmy. We'll just we'll hang out here until it burns it all up and get rid of it anyway. So they stay right there and let the shit burn up. <laughs> didn't, do, didn't do nothing to them, you know. And then fucking Jimmy, yeah. like said, Jimmy Holt is a well-known person here in, in Middle Tennessee. You know what I mean? Right, he right. With Bill and all them fishermen and stuff, and he'd go hunting and had his had his own hunting show and fishing show every Saturday. And yeah, I used to go over and used to go over and cut his grass and and. Uh, just whatever he whatever he wanted done to go over there and work on his lawn. Go over and work on his riding lawnmower and get his running riding lawnmower running and then and then I'd take my lawnmower and cut his grass. But he wanted to keep his lawnmower running in case he wanted to cut it. And he he never would cut it. Because <laughs> you kept it trimmed. I kept it trimmed for him. Yeah. Um, all them all them fishing guys, they're in Tulsa down here. Uh, this weekend for the Bassmaster. Yeah. I guarantee every one of them knows who Jimmy Holt is. I guarantee, guarantee it. I guarantee it. Yeah. They had some old timers down there. Oh, Roland Martin was there. Bill Dance. Yeah. He was a, he was a old timer compared to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's the one that paved the way so they could do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We used yeah. to watch it every every Saturday. We would watch his fishing show on TV, and then we knew where he lived. He didn't live five miles down the road, and he and he's natural. And so we would we were going going over here to like to fish, and you know it was pretty much we could we take a couple little shortcut, a little uh, long way, whatever, and drive by his house every time. So we watch his show on Saturday, and then we'd get all our shit together, packed up. And we would drive by his house. We're going fishing. We'd drive by his house and yeah. blow the horn. We, we didn't know him back then, but we had blow the horn and Jimmy! <laughs> <laughs> We're going fishing. Yeah. We're going fishing, Jimmy, for good luck. You know what I mean? We'd drive by his house every day, go out there, and didn't catch a damn thing but a buzz. Oh, man. Oh, I thought it might be good luck to drive by his house. We tried. Tried it and didn't work. We was just fishing off the bank, so we didn't catch nothing. Oh, hey. Caught, I wasn't even born. Caught, caught a couple of bluegill and a couple, you know, rockfish, you know. Yeah. Where, where, you, where you lose your lose your sinker and your hook and worm. Everything, yeah. Donate yeah. it to the yeah. lake or. We was out there one day. Buddy had bought him a brand new fishing pole. And he, he put it together, you know what I mean? And he casted it out there. And when he did, he didn't have the front part of it uh, uh, hooked in good enough, and the front part of it cast it all the way out there with it, <laughs> and it was it was sinking. You know what I mean? And where we was at, if it sunk to the bottom, it's going to get hung up. So here we are, one of us, one of us all way over here, and I was way over here. So we all fucking reeled back in real quick. We all fucking cast it out there, and I went over top of his line. The other one over top of his line, and we got them all hooked up to where we pulled his. We all we had a mess when we got back up to the dam. <laughs> To the to the you know up on the rocks or whatever we had a mess to untangle, but we got his front of his fishing pole. <laughs> yeah, we got his fishing pole back, and then we just untangled everything and started over. Yeah, my my grandpa took me fishing at the lake one time, and 
we were we were fishing for catfish you know so you got all your poles set out there and uh my my mom had let me take her fishing pole and sure enough that's the one that is the furthest away and it gets a a little point bite and then the whole fishing pole flips out of the boat into the lake and it's just it's freaking gone dude <laughs> My grandpa, he looked at me and he was like, I guess you got some explaining to do. Yeah. We was, uh, yeah, we those, some bitches, those old <laughs> some bitches don't float. Newer ones <laughs> float. You know, how, yeah. you, you know how, how you see some people that got like a basket of fruit, but it's like plastic fruit, like fake plastic fruit. And so we was out there swimming, uh, out there fishing one night and it was a fucking banana. You know what I mean? And it was just a plastic <laughs> banana floating, floating in the lake. So, uh, well, I got it. I got it fished out, and it, and it's in my tackle box to this day. And there you I, go. I've been in there for twenty five plus years. Got a banana in my t tackle box. It's probably <laughs> nasty and moldy. Ugh. Not a real banana foster. It's a plastic banana foster. I just thought it was funny. You mean like a jerk bait? I just thought it was funny, and we laughed about it every time we went fishing. I thought, you want to yeah. eat this banana? You hungry? You want to <laughs> I have a banana in there. <laughs> I've been saving it for you. Yeah. There you Tie go. that banana to your fishing pole. That way, if it goes overboard, it'll help it float. Yeah. I never had that problem. I always had some old, daddy, rusty fishing poles. That they didn't come <laughs> apart very easy. Like, he bought him a brand new one. Didn't hook it together good. I was using yeah. the only fishing poles I had were my dad's, and I still got them. And most of them are like, they're more for for going out and fishing in the ocean for some heavy shit, some heavy duty damn fiberglass pole rods, you know. Yeah. But everybody always made fun of me because of that. You can't catch nothing. You can't catch no bass, no catfish with that heavy ass rod. It's like every time we go fishing, I was damn near the only one that caught ever caught anything. Yeah. You know? It's like, hey, this is all I got. And this is what I'm using. You know what I mean? I ain't finna go buy nothing. I'm using my dad old shit. Fucking sea, a deep sea fishing pole or not. I don't care. And I'd be, right. be go out there and be about the only one that caught any damn thing. I want to see the damn things. Foster wants to see some fishing gear. Well, you have yeah. To go, you have to go look at one of them fucking buzzard shack videos that shows them in there. There you go. I don't know which one though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, about, about four or five of them. So you have to flip through and I show I show them a little bit. It's the old school. It's both of my dad. I never remembered him going fishing, and I'm fifty years old. So this thing has got to be at least at the minimum fifty years old. You know what I mean? Every bit of it because he never went fishing. And maybe when I was a kid, you know. So 45, probably 40 to 40, 40 to 50 years old uh, or more. That's how right. old it is. Yeah. I got his tackle box, but I never would. His handle was broke, so I didn't there. I just always, I got me a little small, cheap, goodwill tackle box that I had to carry my little shit in. And then, you know, if I needed something out of his, I just didn't carry it with me because I was afraid I was going to tear it up or drop it or break it or something. Right. Look at the little shit he's got in there. There's like an old, like, freaking, you know, lure. Oh, I'm sure. He used to make his own weights, Foster. He used to melt the lid and make his own weights. Well, I'll be goddamn. Shit. Yeah. I, got a, I got a big one of them big lead weights that's got that stamped in on the top of it, how much it weighs and whatever. That's just a big, look like a, like a, you know, how they make a gold bar, but it's a lead bar. Melt it down and make your own weights. I got the, I got that. I don't have the, the burner or anything, but I got the, the lead bar and I got the spoon that you would scoop it out of and pour it into the, to the mold. I got the big, big ass metal spoon. Damn. That's like super old. Joe. It was like in the forties. God damn. There you go. Oh, yeah, that sucker's old. Yep. Yeah. It's called a uh, hula popper. I found that at the lake one day with 
fishing with my, I think my uncle took me that time out to the lake. That thing was floating in a, like a bunch of driftwood up close to the bank. I got another one in here too. I have to dig down for it. Was it wrapped in weeds? No, it was just floating. I'll be son of a bitch. Huh. Well, <laughs> shit. I'm going to see if I can find Jimmy and old YouTube. I found one in lure one time. It's just sitting there caught up in weeds by the shore. Yeah. I'm going to show this uh, Jimmy Hope here uh, if I can get it there right. If I can do That's it right. Hard to see that. Oh, Jimmy O. Jimmy O. Let me call it. Holy shit, look at the size of that bass. Welcome to the Tennessee Outdoorsman Show. Boy, we haven't been on him so long. Would you look at the size of that fella? I know, I know. Roger Jarvis. My right hand you. man. Jimmy. How you doing, my man? Good to see you. David Sam. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, nice to see both of you on the show. They're here tonight because they are doing something for WDC and Tennessee Outdoorsman Show that is absolutely unbelievable. Ajax Turner, Budweiser are holding a Crawfish for Cash tournament along with 98 WSIX and a whole lot of other people involved in this. Bill Clay, I believe, uh, Southeastern Marine Crystal. Four Corners. Four Corners. A lot of people involved in this, and we just appreciate it immensely uh, here at WDCN, their support and uh, what they're doing for us. But as you well know, Joe, you and John, that uh, – they're out here on Percy Priest. Roger had, uh, took time to to catch fish, tag fish. The fish worth twenty five, fifty, a hundred, and seventy thousand dollars. Seventy five. Seventy five thousand. And then, this would be a good place to point out that we're not eligible. No, no, we aren't eligible. That's for sure. The weather's been bad, no doubt about that. Rain uh, for the last month, two months, we've had nothing but rain. Uh, there's been some people though that have been lucky. Uh, I would say. Mr. James A. Armstrong, Sr., who lives on Wheeler Avenue in Nashville, caught one of the $25 crappie that was tagged. Uh, Blant Duke, Hendersonville, a $50 crappie. Eddie Hoback of uh, Laverne, Tennessee, a $50. Thomas Shockley of Nashville, a $25 fish. And Joe Stupek. Yeah, old Jimmy Ho. His sister. Uh, he keeps on talking. Uh, keeps on talking. I don't think it, they, they didn't have fucking YouTube back then, so they didn't have much of, much of stuff put on there. That was well, like six years ago. They ain't find too much of it. That was my buddy, though. He couldn't believe it. I, I, I got him to, he's like, uh, he, he didn't believe me when I asked him, uh, what, did he have an autographed picture I could have? <laughs> he was like, well, damn, I sure do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I said, yeah. and I, I hate to ask you, got two of them. And I said, because I got a friend of mine that would love to have it. Hey, what's his name? I'll give, I'll give him one too. And he's <laughs> black, black and white, you know, eight by ten fucking picture signed to me, one for me and one for my buddy. All right, Foster, here's you another one. God damn, look at that one. Yeah. That is uh, another one that I found at the lake. It's called a uh, Dolly Ditch Digger. Mud digger. Deep, deep diving rig. Somebody probably uh, snagged it up on a rock and broke their line. <clears throat> I just found found those though. I don't know what's in the in my dad tool box. I don't. I mean tackle box. I don't even know where it's at. Really, I know, I know, I got it, but I don't know where it's at right now. I have a good feeling it's probably in a shed somewhere. 
Hold up. up. Yeah. Pull out all those, those big nasties with the big treble hooks on them that hang in you. Oh, hell yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's the Zara Spook. My, my uh, cousin, he's 10 years younger than me. So when I was 18, he was eight. And dude, we fished every farm pond for miles. And then he had this tied onto his pole one day and he caught this largemouth bass in his pond and his bass weighed 13 pounds. Huh. And uh, the, uh, the deal, like I had permission to fish all this stuff, but the people are like, you just turn the fish back loose. Don't keep anything unless it's hooked bad and it's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. So my my little cousin, he sure was pissed when we had to turn that fish loose. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And it was back before uh, cell phones and cameras and all that. So now it's just a fish story, right? That yeah. Fish, me, fish, and, me and him have the memory of it. So we was we was fishing at it's kind of like a, a, a water treatment type place, like off to the side of it or whatever. So we was in the in the little creek thing fishing or whatever on the bank. And here comes the fucking man, you know what I mean? And he's standing up over the bridge over there talking to us. Y'all know y'all trespassing. It's like, oh, shit, really? We, we didn't know. He said, <laughs> uh, he said, well, let me tell you this. He says, he says, y'all walk about five foot that way. And so we walk five foot, you know, down the bank, you know, and he says, now you're not trespassing. It's like, oh, okay. Appreciate yeah. you. He said, have a good day. I hope y'all catch something. He just yeah. thought Five feet down that way, and then you're not trespassing. It's like all day. Hey, Buzzard, put me on the big screen for a second. Oh, shit. Was that a trouser trout? Nope. That, there's a northern pike. Yeah. That's one of them teeth having fish right there. That some bitch. Oh, shit. I caught that damn thing in a bass lure, like one of those plastic worm things. Oh, yeah. Bites you on the crumpets if you don't watch it. How how big was it, Foster? Uh, decent, a uh, normal size one. Okay. No. Yeah, I have a taxidermist down the road from me, and he does fish and stuff all the time. So, but they're always, you know, so nobody's going to taxidermy something small unless it's their first fish. And he had a uh, northern pike and walleye and stuff. Some guys had went north to go fish, and he mounted the fish for them. And then once he got done, he airbrushes all the colors back in, and then uh, brings them up to me, and I clear coat them for him. Right, we saw that in one of your videos. You were clear coating some. Fish. Oh yeah, yeah, those bass. Yeah. So I did a I did a northern pike one time for him that was almost five feet long though. Damn. It was a huge ass fish, dude. He was when when I brought it up here and I, I did it, he's like, be super careful with that thing, okay? He said that's uh like not quite the record, but it was within like ten ounces of being a, a record for the area he was in Canada. Don't fuck up my fish. Yeah. Yeah, the taxidermist was saying that. Yeah, he has. He's done all kinds of crazy stuff. He had a, a couple of doctors that went to Africa, and they killed all this stuff in Africa, and then they shipped it back and mounted it here. So, he did a leopard, um, all the different plains game, like the Cape Buffalo, the Kudu. Wild, wild stuff up there at the taxidermy shop. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Cheers. But he finally, he's retired now. He does just very little of that stuff. Dang it. My dog just farted or something. Dang it. Oh, no. What in the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> you got to go outside or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, get your phone out, buzzard. That, I'm getting ready to do it. 
Dang it, Dan. Got a record. Yeah, yeah. He said this one right here is going to be the Black Mamba. Get ready. Dang, dang it, Jimmy. Dang it. So Vino, I wonder if he's still in the the in the thing on the. I know he's in the chat over there. Like that last video of him putting his gas pedal and everything in his car. That was that's cool that. stuff. Yeah, watch I love that. that gas pedal. I gotta watch it. The solo machine pedal. Yeah, yeah. Dang it, Jimmy. Woody. Oh, there he is. By golly, it's old Woody himself. Coming in. How y'all doing? Down south there in Texas way. With wood hey. metal select hey. blend. Y'all doing all right tonight? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Heck yeah, Woody. We're doing great. I wouldn't talk to you. We've been showing fishing lures tonight. <laughs> no, it's good to hear from you there, Foster. This fucking yeah. fog is lingering in here. Fuck. <laughs> it's so great. What does it smell like? It smells like two tons of ass. Two tons. <laughs> That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. Yes. Wow. That's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. I don't fucking die. I fell off. Thank you, notes. And I was just run <laughs> running a bit behind. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? I thought the fucking tire fell off. Oh, man. Oh, so out of order. Does a Turbo 350 transmission have to have the uh, the passing Ooh. gear, that kick down cable hooked up on it to work properly? No. That is, yeah, I, was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking no, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to say yeah. that. It's not a throttle pressure cable like a 200 right. The only thing you won't have, you won't have passing gear. Right. When you floor it. So you don't really. So the. You, you can downshift manually. The trans, right. You can downshift manually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the C6. In the 35 Chevy, like, never locks up. You know what I mean? You can be driving along and I can stomp the gas to the floor and it's like it's got a. 5,000 RPM converter in it. It just slides. You, is it sure it stock? doesn't have a... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is it stock converter? No. No, it's got a 2,500 stall converter in it. <clears throat> but it's like... It don't... It don't go. It's, it, it's got slippage. I've had... Yeah, I had a I have a twenty five or twenty eight hundred in one of my cars, and it it wasn't that bad for slippage, but one of my other cars, my sixty nine Cutlass, it's a car I didn't build. I got it that way, and it converter and it has a lot of slippage. Like I can put it in gear, and hold the brakes, and then gas it, and get the engine up to thirty five hundred RPM, and the tires aren't even spinning. You know, and it's yeah. the grass, and I'm holding it with drum brakes. And when I raced the car at the track, the the RPM at the end was way mismatched mathematically for what the car mile per hour at. I think I got a lot of slippage in the converter, like the converter was ballooned inside, you know, and coming apart, and I can't yeah. really trust it. So that's one of the things I wanted to change on that car. Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to get a hold of the transmission guy tomorrow and like run this by him and find out what the hell we need to do. I mean, hell, we ran this transmission on a transmission dyno. So that's what makes me think it's like this converter or, or something that I have done. It wouldn't be anything you did. I mean, the converters can go bad. Was the converter new or is it? Yeah, it's, this is a brand new converter. And the we did not dyno it with this converter on it. We dynoed it with a stock converter. Is it an 11-inch converter or 10-inch converter? Uh, yeah, 10, I believe. 
10. So 10s can yeah. be usually like more than 28. Most of the 10s are like okay, 3,500. So 3, yeah, I, yeah, I would honestly, I'd have to look at it. I've got the box over here. I, think. I had a, a 10 inch 3,200 in another one of my cars, and that thing would stall up to 3,200, but it wouldn't slip any more past that. It was, yeah, and then. Th those are like old school converters I'm talking about. The newer stuff, they said the converters would drive normally and only flash when you got on them. They didn't have any park throttle slippage like the old time converters did. That's the way mine is. The the Hughes, the 2400. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way the others that I've had were fine. Uh, my Nova, it had a, a 10 inch converter in it, but shit, it was bolt together, um, built for that car. Cause, uh, when we went over 700 horsepower in it, you, you couldn't use anything that you could just like order from summit. Right. And it, you'd be putting one in every weekend and it would take the trans out with it if it went. Uh huh. Went through a few transmissions in the old Nova. The yeah. power, power slides. The best one was uh, we were at the starting line and my boss wanted to drive the car. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So all you got to do is pull into the burnout box, hit this button, lock the brakes up and floor it. Run it up seven grand and then let off the button and roll out. He pulled in there, got the burnout going, let go of the... Uh, the line lock and hit the trans brake oh. <clears throat> grenaded the transmission right there in the burnout box oh. i mean it shit was rolling out from under the car kind of grenaded it had to yeah it had to implode that sucker yeah it, it busted the case in four places it would have been a good youtube video oh yeah what about the uh does that Chevy 350, is it like a C6? Does it have a vacuum modulator on it? Yeah, yeah. Do, yes. And that's all hooked up, but the vacuum modulator just controls first to second shift. Right. If that vacuum oh, modulator is okay. not hooked up on the Turbo 350, it'll never shift out of first. Right. Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. And it's a, it's adjustable, but, I mean, yeah, it's, got the uh, screw. it's not even like letting it rev way up or anything. It's the, the deal is like, I mean, sitting still, it's fine. When you go to take off and stuff, it stays within that stall speed. But what gear is in the back? 373. See, that should be enough gear that should tone that stall down on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll, it turns 3000 RPM going down the road, but it just acts like speed. the trans is, not locking up inside it like like i said when i when you stomp on the gas it'll turn up i back out of it when it hits five thousand rpm because i mean it's the motor ain't got no miles on it <clears throat> i hate to run her too hard and drop a valve in dad's brand new motor you get i'll do that <laughs> oh shit i broke some shit before brother <clears throat> and it could happen again I told him, I was like, you're going to have to take this car. I said, I know it doesn't have door panels on it or whatever. I said, but I am going to either break something or I'm going to get a ticket. Oh, yeah. break well, the land. Try another converter. But I got the, got the front end lined up on it and they were like, take it out and drive it around the block and see how it feels. So I got out in front of the uh, front end alignment shop there and stepped on the brakes and run it up about 4,000 and shifted into second and let off the brakes just so they could hear it. Yeah. So. What do you have in the blue Chevy, the C10? It's it's a 700 trans in it. Oh, R4. It's just basically got a uh, like a TBI motor with a carburetor on it. And a stock. I was just wondering if they had a 350 or not. No, no. You have anything else with the 350 in it? Turbo? No. 350? No, I do not. My even my four wheel drive, it's got a turbo four hundred in it. That converter's interchangeable. 
Yeah, I'm. I'll just get a hold of my transmission guy. Yeah, that's, and, that sounds strange there. Yeah, yeah, it, it's weird for sure. But I don't know. What's up, full hmm. throttle kind of guy? Cheers, guy. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Cheers. It's, well, you don't want your old man at a red light having to throttle it up to 3,000 RPMs before it takes off on him. <laughs> Not really, I mean? yeah. 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 And it'll it'll drive right. normal. I mean, when we went to the tag office, he rode, he rode with me to the tag office, but uh, my mom's kind of down right now, so my dad's got to stay with her. And I was like, dude, I got to get the front end aligned on this car while I'm off on spring break. So he just, we just did it. How's your mom doing? Yeah. She's doing good. She's doing yeah. good. She's able to motivate around with a walker and go to the bathroom by herself. And right on. Outlook, that looks a lot better now. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, Poor grandma. She'll be all right. Just give oh, her a yeah. She, she will. She'll be ready. Yeah, I couldn't believe that truck wasn't. Go ahead, Buzz. No, oh, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, <laughs> that's it. I'm putting YouTube right now. Well, I was just saying, I, I couldn't believe. <laughs> Woody's bullying buzzard now. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye. Quit. I'm done. <laughs> I was just going to say, I couldn't believe that truck wasn't clear coated. No shit, dude. That thing shines yeah. like a diamond in a goat's ass. I ain't watched it. Yeah. Was, I'm, back, right, I'm back to what I need to watch. In in person, it's like it's got some s scratches and stuff, you know, because it's old. But it's like, holy crap, that thing is just like butter. Yeah. I really yeah. like that whole build. It wasn't overdone, you know. No, stuff, when it gets overdone, it's yeah, not, it's not. And, you know, it might and, be good yeah. for other people, but I don't like them when they're overdone. Yeah. So they had the radio on and freaking copyrighted music playing so i had to cut out the <laughs> whole part of they bought that truck and it was a hundred percent disassembled uh i mean well the glass was still in the cab but the doors were off fenders were off cab was off the frame so they they bought it at an estate sale pretty cheap and then uh the guy that did the front end alignment on the 35, the one that's talking in the video, his name's Ryan. And Ryan uh, talked his dad into building it. And Ryan also owns a, uh, like a tuner shop. So he's got a chassis dyno and everything. Yeah. And I've seen that. The truck up, man. It's, uh, it makes 350 horse to the rear tires. And they said they've got, 19 miles a gallon out of it driving it down the highway run pretty well yeah and then that crown vic front end under it um you know that it's a weird. lighter model huh that was weird, weird looking at the yeah the rack and pinion went across through there i was one that whole yeah. thing that whole cross member is aluminum yeah yeah, yeah. and all, he cut ones. it cut it and short or narrowed it four inches to get it to fit Oh, okay. Yeah, cut it. And then at the very beginning of the video, I have a shot where if you zoom in, you can see the weld going around the middle of it there. And then uh, he's got a, a plasma table, you know, a CNC table. So he cut all of the brackets and boxing plates. I mean, it, it looks like something that was done at a, you know, I guess it was at a professional shop. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Then he has three sons, and all three of his sons are running the open wheel race cars right now. So it's they're a pretty cool bunch. They've been like in Bartisville since 1925, and their family owned a, a salvage that was like in where almost downtown Bartisville is now. But during World War II, they Bartisville took the property that the salvage was on and they moved all of the cars out further west. They, they basically gave them more property, but took that for the city. 
So what, my did dad, I annex it or something? Yeah, yeah, they annex that. <clears throat> my dad, he was talking about going and playing in all these old cars out at the salvage where it was in the west part of the town. And uh, he kind of grew up with the guy that started the front end alignment shop. And they they run around together. My grandpa painted like three or four race cars for him. <clears throat> so it's in the truck video. I didn't show really any other shop, but I have another video that I've edited that'll be out here pretty quick. That's uh, the alignment on the 35 in there. And I, I seen showed, it as you you guys were pulling the truck out. Yeah, yeah. The bay. I seen it up getting ready to go up around the rack, or either right. it's going on the rack it, or whatever. But it was yeah. already on it. So yeah. these dudes they do front end alignment, but they're aligning stuff on a B line front end alignment rack that only does like front tires. And shit, that son of a bitch is probably aligned, you know a year's worth of production out of an auto factory where the cars through its years like they said it was put in there in 80 something that you could definitely tell from it it had done a lot yeah uh, yeah we had the 35 up there and apparently uh one side of it was three quarters of an inch lower than the other side so we had to jump in his truck, go over across a couple streets and to his other shop and get a set of uh, spanner wrenches to adjust the coilovers on the front hmm. to raise that one front corner. It drives a hell of a lot better now. Good. It's, like I said, it'll get you, it'll get you a ticket, get you in trouble with the police in a hurry. I bet. <clears throat> got got just the right mix. I mean, it's nothing like uh, the new new uh, powertrain that's making a ton of horsepower, but it's a light car. And the 373 gear, the cam and the motor, everything is set up to work together, you know, in the right oh, RPM yeah, they range. Don't much either. No, no. It I need to see that on a scale. Yeah, that's that's what I was just gonna say. Uh, we're gonna have to drive it out to the dump or the steel yard and drive it up on the scales and weigh it. So I bet, I bet it doesn't weigh twenty two hundred pounds, something like that. It's pretty light. Yeah. That's like, because they're pretty narrow too. Cars, you know. Oh, it's a little bitty car. It's a hundred and what was a hundred and six inch wheelbase. That's pretty short wheelbase. Yeah, that's like a G yeah. I mean, it's G body GM car wheelbase. Yeah, yeah. My uh, my Honda Accord is longer than the thirty five Chevy is. <laughs> I think the Mustang like ninety nine inch or hundred and one inch wheelbase. I can't remember. Yeah, so, somewhere in there. It's close to an Explorer. That's close to my truck, my stepside truck. Mm, I'm sure it's, it's like 97. Like yeah. My stepside was like 98 or 101 or something like that. I, think. I don't remember. But. I don't either. I well, got a fact. I got a fact check that. I know those short bed, like those <laughs> body short bed Fords, will go on a Crown Vic chassis, and that's a hundred and sixteen inch wheelbase. Like yeah, that. that's what I was saying. The trucks are close to one twenty. Dang it, Woody! Got the fact check. Thank you, Jimmy. Google it. No, it's not about. It's not about Woody. I just want to yeah. know. Google that shit real quick. What is it again that we're measuring? Wheelbase. Size of our pecker. No, we don't want to do that. Yeah, hog shooter win. Yeah, it, it is. It's 100, 117. No. Yeah. 
for a step side short wheelbase step side don't matter i think yeah. the long wheelbase ford trucks are 133 in the 70s yeah. One third, yeah. Like Woody's a, a long wheelbase to be one thirty one. Be one thirty one. Chevys were like one thirty one, and the Fords were one thirty three. They had a couple extra inches in the cab. A couple extra inches in the cab. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At any Mike, rate, you want to go fishing? My my wife kept talking about how big that car was, and I put it in my house garage one day, and I was like, "Now you're used to seeing a forerunner parked in here. Look at this, and there's all kinds of room to walk around the old Chevy with both doors open." Yeah, I like that forerunner. That's on my short list of things to buy if I had to buy another SUV. You know, for man. I missed a, I missed a hell of a deal on one up in uh, Olathe, Kansas. There was a '95 that needed uh, some engine work done, but the outside of it was clean and the frame wasn't rusty. And this thing sold for fifteen hundred bucks. Oh shit! You could, with that investment, you could afford to really do up a motor for it. Oh, shit! I'd uh, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, the ad had been up for 23 <coughs> minutes and i think it sold in the first five <laughs> the dude's I'm like i've got to delete that ad man <laughs> <laughs> i've hit good on stuff like that the ad come up i, I you know the 03 and 04 mustang mock ones they had this those flat face cast aluminum wheels I got a set of those for a hundred bucks because the ad has been up for like 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. That's it. Of course, That's they're laying it. around the yard. I never used them on anything. I should probably, I'm going to round up a bunch of stuff I know I'll probably never use and start putting yeah. it in the marketplace to get some, yeah. get some space. Drive up, to, drive up to one of them swap meets and set you up a booth and uh, go to selling. Let them haggle you down. Yeah, I thought about doing that. I've never never had a swap meet space, never done that, you know. I guess I, I could I'm get a track every once in a while. I could go yeah. there. I think the space is I don't know how much the space is cost, twenty five. The first time for everything. That's right. Yeah. Think of people you could meet and the conversations you could have at a swap meet. I do that as a buyer. I, I, that's half the fun when I go to Hershey was just talking to people, you know. Oh yeah. You want to burn through the swap meet and get all the stuff, but every once in a while you start stop and start talking to somebody. It's like, you know what? This conversation is much better than, you know, beating Rush. up here and looking for more parts. Let me finish talking with this you know, with these people. Right. Until they highball you and it's like this conversation's over. Yeah. yeah, well, it's nice talking to you. I got to go yeah. here. Yeah. I gotta go take a dump. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I think I need to go take a dump. Yeah, I was talking with this one guy, and I didn't even know he had the stuff. And I was looking as I was talking with him, I was looking through the stuff, and he had some of the the lenses that go in the GM convertibles in those side kick panel pieces for the back seat. And they were new GM ones in the package. He's like, Ooh. he's like, oh, he said, you want that stuff? You can have it. Like, holy shit! Yeah. They, wow. They repop them, but you know, repops yeah. good sometimes, but you can't beat original stuff. There should like, it. if you still got that right there, you could put that on the damn eBay, do your eBay store, or go to the swap meet, and somebody out there looking for that shit. But I actually need it because the ones in my convertibles are disintegrating. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So every time yeah. someone does that to me, I always kick them a few bucks. You know. Yeah. I always go, oh man, I appreciate it, and I'll give them whatever I think they're almost worth. You know. What you were willing to pay uh, for them? Right. Yeah. Well, it's I, just I a matter of karma. You know. He didn't want any money. I I tried. He's like, no. Yeah, I mean, some people are like that, too. They won't take anything from you. There you go. 
Yeah. So you take those new GM ones and scan them and then 3D print them. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Repop off of an original. Yeah, dirt cheap, free shipping. Free shipping. Free. Just one seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah. You got to deburn hey. yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> Some standing required. I just got an yeah. Instagram notification from Slowsmobile. Remember, he hadn't been around for a while. He probably yeah. Was. We were wondering about Slow's him. Mobile. He sends me shit all the time on Instagram. I don't have time. I'm afraid to click on the links because <laughs> I hadn't seen him in so long. You know, I don't know whatever he's, you know, what he's doing there. You know, right. I don't know. I, he I, needs I, to get his ass on this live sometime, you know. There you go. We scared hey, him. We might all be work. Or something. We all work, Trollsmobile. <laughs> what are you talking, Fostered? I said, what he's saying? It could be porn or something. Those links. Oh, off no. it could be a virus that take over your phone. I don't, I don't, click on I don't care who it's from. It just Oster, yeah. Oster watches the fish hub. Yeah, yeah, he's on the, <laughs> the Billy Bass <laughs> hub <laughs> over there. Yeah, it's called YouTube. Yeah. Bath tube or whatever. I see Robert was in here earlier. Yeah, he was. I don't know where he's at now. Off in the gigabyte somewhere. T four two. What's up, T four two? Wayne Reynolds. Yeah. Bino Where's your bay at tonight? Bino. Yeah, I seen his gas pedal assembly. I, I made him a couple of smart remarks on there about like, how many times did you say the word shaft? Shaft <laughs> this, shaft collars. Screws set screws on the shaft collars and you know, give him a hard yeah. time. Burt Reynolds, there he is. I knew he hey, was trolling. Burnt. Hey, Beavis, he said shaft. He happened to just, <laughs> hey, Beavis, he said, <laughs> uh, uh, What a dumbass! <laughs> yeah. Who you calling a dumbass fart face? <laughs> yeah. Burt Reynolds, what's up, bud? Trolls the devil. How you doing? Crazy busy. Crazy busy. I imagine. Oh, you talk y'all talked him up. Hell yeah. He just manifested, man. Yeah, we, we conjured him up. I knew he was trolling. Him, He's called Trollsmobile, right? Trollsmobile? Yeah. Didn't He's didn't he buy something from you, John? Hey, Beavis, you're giving me a stiffy. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. hey, that's, just doing it again. Just give me a stiffy. Yeah. Out of order. Didn't he order something from you or something another a long time no. ago? Yeah, long no, a long time ago I bought a rear sway bar for the round caprices from him. It's like out of production. Wow. It's like an inch and three eighths rear sway bar. And I bought it from him. I didn't even remember that. He remembered the deal we had. And I never put it on. I know exactly where it's at. I saw it the other day. It's sitting in my garage. I remember y'all talking about something like that. Because he was called Spazzer on the, there used to be a thing called Rocket Talk. This is back when we had like dial up internet at the house and we'd all get on Rocket Talk. It was like a chat room, be like an internet chat thing. And we'd get on there and just, you know, bullshit with each other. So he's one of the true trolls then at the beginning. <laughs> He's been around a long time. <laughs> He's been there about Wayne Reynolds. Yeah. Down in the Hooter, as Wayne called. <laughs> the Hooter. The Hooter. Yeah, I've seen the stuff on the Instagram there, Trolls Mobile. Sometimes I'll look at it, but most of the times I don't. I just give you a heart. I don't click on links. I've learned my lesson a long time ago on that. <laughs> He's learned. He I learned did. it. Learned it. Yeah. I'm a yeah. computer guy, guys. So, you know. Links can be bad. 
a tech a technology whatever the fuck it's called techno wizard yeah That's woody yeah no nah, i don't know anything about technology <laughs> No, Good for know. you. I don't know. I think you're blowing. Blowing smoke. Good for <laughs> you. Yeah. And you donate the sperm where? Mm, just kind of everywhere. <laughs> kind of everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Have you seen that Beavis and Butthead bit with tech support? The two of them walk their way into a, a, a phone tech support center, and then they just sit down and start answering the phone. I might have seen that. I'll get bored. It's a pretty good one. Right. I got, I got a fan. Was that, that's where the fucking tire fell off. He's making it one of the white Russian. Yeah. I mean, coffee. Ice coffee. <laughs> Iced coffee drink that he has. Yeah. Uh, makes him, makes him some, he probably put some whipped cream and a cherry on top of it, too. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. No wonder. I can't be on all night. I told my wife I come to bed earlier. Early. No, she told you. She told you. You didn't tell her. <laughs> like the other day, he just bounced out without saying goodbye. Uh -huh. he, he, he said, Robert, Robert, go live. Robert, go live. Robert goes live. And next thing I know, he disappears. Where did where, where he go? Cheers, gang. Cheers. Hey, good for you. Oh man! What the fuck was that? I thought a fucking tire fell off. <laughs> Settle down. Jesus Christ! Lord. Settle down. Sometimes I watch I, that. I'm talking with your bells, Keith. Sometimes I watch that one and I ain't even live. Oh yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> Foster, you got to have a birthday coming up soon, huh? Yep. He's gonna be 21. Get over it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm an old mother trucker. Yeah, mother trucker. You are. He's 22 to get over. Hey, good for you, Woody. Uh, I read your comment, Foster, Woody, the wood chipper. You're real funny, buddy. Yeah. yeah. What? Foster has all the jokes. <laughs> I know I'm funny. I'm real funny. Yeah. All right, Foster. Well, son of a bitch could explode. You know, blow your goddamn head off. Still funny. Blow your As the one. head off. Blow your head. Every time I put air in a tire, I think about that. Yeah, yeah, that's it runs through your head, doesn't it? Every time I hear a fucking hard bump on the road, I think, what the fuck was that? And I thought the tire fell off. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. I don't know. I like old mechanics. He posted a lot more. He's one of those guys that they hit like a million subscribers, you know. Yeah. That's all we let off. What was that? That's all like Robert there for a second. Well, that's uh, all we let off, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mother trucker. Mother trucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Foster. Settle down, Foster. It's like Tom likes to play that fucking, you know, it was a fucking, oh yeah, the pay, the big payback. 
the big payback. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional yeah. damage. <laughs> Come out. I'd like to play the big payback, bitch. Yeah. Ice coffee. Yeah. Fresh. I finally found some of that Blackberry Crown. That's all the rage. You know, they came out new and. Hard to get because everybody's buying it. And tastes like shit. Tastes like cough syrup a little bit. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay straight, but there are like a drink you make with it with lemonade, and the combination of that crown and you know the blackberry and the lemonade mix made for a right tasty drink. So Robin wanted it, and I finally found it. You know, yeah. And the guy's like, I can sell you one bottle, you know, because yeah. I guess. <laughs> Popular people were, you know, kind of trying to hoard it up. And it's like, one bottle's good. I'm good. Thanks. They're going to buy it. They're going to sell it on the internet. What they're going to do because it's a limited run. And shit, yeah. You know. It's like $27 for the bottle, but that's fine. Sometimes fruit like that's not certain. Bad. Not really. Right. Certain fruits like that do real good in a, in a season. And then sometimes they don't. So you can't, can't make it all the time, you know. Right. You can make apple, or you might be able to make peach all the time, but certain shit. I don't have any fireball here. I drank all that. Well, I'll be dang. I'm good. I'm, the bush latte will do me fine. Dang it, Jimmy. Dang it, Jimmy. No festivities well, shit, tonight. Man. Spring break is over. Oh, shit. When do you go back? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm getting ready to sign off here in a minute. Yeah. Go to the Greenland, hopefully. Right now, you're yeah. actually in Streamland. Right. We are we are streaming in the yard right here, bud. Yeah. Have to take you a couple of those trazodones and knock yourself out, man. Yeah, yeah. Ambient, ambient, ambient. Ambient, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I'll wake up this time tomorrow. <laughs> I go yeah. to taking anything. <laughs> yeah. Kids be teaching themselves at that point, huh? Oh, oh they are running the asylum. I was either watching something on TikTok or YouTube or one is a little video, and he said, he said, the guy, the guy actually got up in the middle of the night, preheated the oven. I think it was Joe Rogan. He said he preheated the oven. He went down to the store. He bought a turkey, come back, stuffed the turkey, cooked the turkey, got up the next day and said, somebody broke in my house and cooked the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take every Yeah, but that's a, beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, got a, a Jeep we've been doing at the school that – the the tub part of it is the last thing to paint and it's we had it all prepped before spring break but we painted all of the the rest of the sheet metal for the jeep before so the tub is the last thing it's prepped and ready to paint and then uh i got a bunch of motorhome parts today they're all they need to be prepped but they'll be easy and quick to paint yeah yeah. Y'all see my new Always ATM? Something. You see my new ATM sign? I saw that. On the thumbnail. See, my, yeah. yeah. Sister in law bought me that, brought me that and a, and another open sign. And they both they'll they'll light up across like ATM, flicker and real bright, this that. He brought me cool. a couple of days ago. I got all the signs. I think I got no place to put the shit. <laughs> right. Just don't clean them up with the. Uh, oh yeah. You know. I fucked the one, I fucked that one up, but it was already fucked up. It's, that that sign Woody was probably I bet it was thirty years, thirty forty years old, and been hanging in the window of a store with the sun on it. Yeah, but that I'm last like, one when you cleaned it reglazed your bathtub red. Like <laughs> red, red rum. <laughs> I watched uh, before I even cleaned them. I've watched, I've watched videos of people repainting them and stuff, and it ain't hard to repaint it. But 
I fucked up and left. I sprayed that shit on there and fucking was drinking and washing clothes and washing dishes and sweeping the floor. And this thing finally went back in there. I was like, oh, fuck. Damn fucking things bleeding on me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Red shit going down the drain, huh? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. I seen it. I seen the video a couple times. It looked like a blood bath. I shouldn't even spray none of that stuff on there. On it. none of them. I should have just sprayed them off and, and let them dry, and but they'd all been fine. But I was trying to make a video and trying to make some kind of super clean something somebody watch and fuck it. I don't care nothing about that old sign. Somebody give it to me, just like all the rest of them. I wouldn't spend the time. As hell. I was laughing it's, my ass off. I felt for you though. I did. I felt for you. If somebody, I get I get so much of shit about that sign. If somebody gave me the paint for free, I wouldn't take the time to paint it. I, I, I don't care. I wouldn't even take the time to paint the thing back. Yeah, super clean asked me to do another video and a giveaway. I'm like, Shh. Yeah, me too. It's like it's almost a burden at this point. I might yeah. spray super clean all over my fucking uh, uh, expedition. Go to the car wash and just fucking dump super clean all over it for a few minutes and spray it off. Yeah. What happens? Yeah. What happens? Happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd take a, a spray bottle of that super clean. You know, whatever it is, twenty four ounces, and put it in about three gallons of soapy water, and wash it with that, and it'll take all the oxidization off. Right. Ah. I spray Ooh. it without hurting, without hurting the paint. I spray it on there full Ooh. strength. Yeah, full strength is harsh. Hey, <laughs> okay. I, I just thought of something. Remember that time that freaking Completo Garage did a freaking super clean thing? You dropped the fucking container, you broke the lid off, and sprayed everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah. You spray it on the on there straight. You just gotta be at the car wash ready to wash it up. Oh yeah. That's I sprayed it all yeah. over the Plymouth and shit, which I didn't give a shit about it. But yeah. I, I started to spray it on the Yukon. I just didn't have time to do it. Because it was all molded like that on one side. Not the Yukon, but the Tahoe that I pulled the engine out of. I started to do that just to, you know, leave it on there and see what it did to the paint. I just yeah. didn't didn't have time to fuck with it and got busy and didn't do it. Used to do that at the dealership to get car used car stuff ready. Get something in that was a white turd all faded out and take and wash it with like 20 or 30 percent degreaser in the wash water. Hell, it there'd be white shit just running off of it. Huh power wash the shit out of it, run over it with a light compound and then polish it and wax it and put it on the lot, baby. Paid eight hours. So you better be able to do it in three. Right. I give a, I give a shit a list about that truck, so, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I might just do it. I might just take my little pump sprayer and tell super clean hey fucking send me some products you know told them before when i was degreasing the plymouth or something i don't know just send me degreaser they're gonna send me all the shit and i'm like just you know they'll send me four bottles of stuff send me four bottles of degreaser spray all only you know i don't want this i don't want that give me some fucking money give me some money yeah damn right I use their foaming hey, they stuff, keep, they, just to regular keep, foaming. Yeah. And hey, they keep watching you sit that. on the that, garage door. That's one of my videos that gets watched quite a few times. What is that? Super clean versus neon signs? <laughs> yeah. It gets watched quite a few times. Yeah. Stuff works. There's no doubt about that. No, there ain't no doubt about it. It's uh, it's caustic soda is what the shit is in it that makes it work good. Yeah. It's caustic fine. soda? What the fuck is caustic soda? 
it is what it says it is. It's caustic soda. That's it kind is, of the uh, same stuff Purple Power is, right? That's super, yeah. super clean. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You get in the you get into a detail shop and buying bulk material. We used to buy that shit by the 15 or 20 gallon plastic barrel. Huh. Right. This straight caustic soda. And then you have to dilute it down to use it really. Um, Cause it would etch the shit out of anything that aluminum. Right. I know about it's your that. hands. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wear rubber gloves. If you're spraying it, you should wear a respirator as well because it'll yeah. irritate your throat like crazy. Straight. Like neurotic acid. Yeah, super clean yeah, don't it's not super that clean, aggressive. Super clean don't taste very good either. No, no, probably not. Just saying. Just saying. I, I know from experience. Yeah, I didn't try it'll to take drink. the tartar off your teeth though. I didn't try to drink it or nothing, but <laughs> yeah. You just swish it around a little bit and spit it out. The shit got blue in my face when I was playing with the Plymouth one day with it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's real nasty. Oh, shit, yeah, it'll burn your skin. And get it on you. I got two two cylinder heads I need to clean up, and I don't even want to take the super clean to it because I want what show, when I put the engine together and what's in the in the truck, what's, what's you know, the part of the aluminum uh, heads, I want it to look good when I, you know what I mean? What shows, yeah. I, want, I might, yeah, you know, I might polish that one little front of that head or something or the side right here. Or I don't want to, I don't want to mess them up. Right. Yeah. You just, you can use it on them. You just get, can't let it sit on them. Yeah. I was going to probably take some Dawn dishwashing liquid to it. Cause that, even that, even that, the super clean, it takes a lot to rinse it off to get it. Uh huh. To let yeah. it you know, stays stays residue all over it and dawn dishwasher liquid and the scrub brush. I may yeah. I may have made already you know done a video. I don't know maybe. What about that gunk <laughs> engine cleaner? Have you guys ever used that? It's kind of like salt yeah, and long time ago. Yeah. That stuff is pretty good. Yeah, yeah it works it too. Matter. It's not near as aggressive. As the purple no. power or super clean that, that is. might be good for your aluminum heads, you know, clean them up without being too aggressive on there. Yeah. Or get that, what's that one other one, that green, that's green? Simple green? Simple green. Yeah. Simple green. yeah. That's even that, less harsh. Is it? Right. Dawn, Dawn dishwashing liquid yeah. and some hot ass water will do amazing things. Yeah. I end up using dishwashing liquid to wash my hands yeah that works better than even like the lava i keep a bar of lava soap and always have a, a little scrub brush well, i've always just you dawn dishwashing liquid but yeah I use the dawn wash my hands and that gets all the grease right off and my hands aren't all you know crazy crazy but when i was working a lot and my hands were dry I'd put, I'd get like the aloe stuff for sunburns or whatever, the aloe gel, and just put the aloe gel all over my hands. It's kind of sticky, but it dry real fast. But it made a big difference to keep the hands from cracking. Yeah. 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 He's WD forty. Used to work next to a guy that, like, his hands dried out really bad and would split open and bleed. Yeah. And I got him some stuff that's called bag bomb and used to put it on the cow's udders that uh, it, it'll it keep keep them moisturized, keep you from drying out like that. We'll see you, Burt Riddle. We just lost the foster. What's it called? Bag bomb? Bag, B-A-G, bag bomb. Comes in a little green tin. There's some stuff like that. What's the, There's another... Uh... Utter and utter, or nutter utter, or utter butter, or something. Utter butter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's another. There's, I think it might be just something they sell around here, but there's another thing like that, and it's but it's just a different name. There's a bunch of them. They have Vermont's original bag balm. You can get that at Walmart. There you yeah. go. I might get some of that for my son because he, the one that lives in like upstate New York, and he's always out 
looking at those electric jobs and whatever, and his hands get really dry and cracked. Yeah. yeah. That's the way this guy was at work beside me. He just like, he come from Tennessee and damn pussy, his hands would dry out constantly. Get all pansied out on me. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, bleeding. My, my don't worry about a little dry skin and bleeding. You're all right. I, I do that, but they don't, yeah. they, don't, they, don't, they, don't get, they don't go to the extreme. You know, they don't go to the extreme where I get big ass cracks and bleeding. But my, 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 mine, will get, mine will get dry, and if you, I can rub, I can rub my my fingertips across your arm, and you'll feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mine just never have dried out like that, but like, you know, in the body shop, you're in lacquer thinner and shit all the time. Bondo dust sucking all of the moisture out of you. Mine didn't do it when I was thinking. Oh, yeah. It, it started that shit in the last 10 years doing it when it went right. in the summertime when I was out working and, you know, should have had gloves on or, and, you know, certain times and then washing your hands all the fucking time because you don't went out there and touched something, grease or something, just didn't put a glove on. This, this yeah. stuff here works pretty good, too. I've, I've used this. I was thinking beeswax. Beeswax. Is yeah. A, but it's probably yeah. the same. Yeah. It's, it's probably close to the same. It is. It works good. It works good. It's right. Just a white cream. Oh, put it on there. Oh, my uncles used to get so bad that I don't know what the doctors prescribed to him, but he would put it all over his hands. And it was a lotion and then put rubber gloves on. They had to stay like that for a couple two or three hours. I was like, damn, dude. And, but his, yeah. his, his, he was literally getting the big ass splits and shit, you know. Mine just, mine just dry the fuck out bad. Yeah. My grandpa would use bacon grease. Yeah, uh, yeah. Then all the hound dogs liked him. Right, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I freaking come right to him, man. Didn't even have to har hardly call him. Here they Just are. following me around. Yeah. Uh, my other dog yeah, that I had, not this one, but the other dog that I had, my brother come over one day, and uh, my dog would not leave him alone. <laughs> my brother got to the point where he got a little pissed off and mad, you know. But I did you know, screamed at the dog, you know, and then kind of felt bad a little while later because he realized he had a piece of beef jerky in his pocket. He didn't have it in the pocket because he was going to eat it. It was something left over that he was going to give the fucking dog when he got there. And he forgot about it. The dog was fucking getting mad and shit, you know, and then he got mad and he was like, oh, fuck, man. I see why he's bothering me because this fucking piece of beef jerky in my pocket. Yeah. Holding out on him. Yeah. My oh, grandfather yeah. used to show me all the little hiding places where he kept his liquor. Yeah. <laughs> he had it outside underneath the tree stumps, you know, little hollow places. You know, he had it stashed everywhere. Yeah. Don't you tell your grandma now. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, well, well, give me a drink. <laughs> yeah. Give me a drink. I won't tell her. <laughs> grandpa he was awesome, man. Kept a, he was awesome. Kept a bottle in the hay barn and one in the chicken house. Hell yeah, he did. Everywhere. Yeah. He was Got cool as hell. My grandma, she wasn't so cool, but he was, you know. <laughs> right. Grandma she'd just wrap your ass. Grandma would make uh hot toddies for you if you had a sore throat. Yeah. We were oh, all yeah. the time sick. Yeah. Grandma got Honey, a sore throat. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, had this, yeah. she had this bottle of Crown. It was like a, a gallon <laughs> bottle of Crown. And big it's ass grandma. pull it out and make you a little hot toddy, you know? Ease yeah. your sore throat. Well, when she passed away, I got that bottle. Because yeah. it had been there since ever since I could remember. And it still had the little tax deal on the top. And it was 1972. Some yeah. people wow. pay big money for those you bottles. Can't, can't like, can't. damn, I bet that's some rough ass liquor. My dad looked at me and he said, "If you think that's that was Crown Royal in that bottle, well, you're about thirty years too late." Yeah, <laughs> yeah keep on adding to that bottle. Yeah, but Look, you're right. That, no I saved wrong. it. I, I saved it with that the little sticker still on the lid of it. Yeah. Yeah, one of them things. I got that, and there's an old uh, 
crock, you know, a big yeah, crock that you got put in on the fireplace down there. The and they green. talked about taking taking it down to the timber with the liquor in there. My grandpa, he made uh, el elderberry wine. Yeah. Take it, mm. put it in a jar and bury it. And mm. dig, dig it up after however long. And yeah. I, I guess his elderberry wine ended up being about uh, 60 proof. Yeah, not <laughs> it, was, it was a little little rough, they said. That's not bad. It's fine. Yeah, I miss my grandparents bad. No, boy. Something else. Both of yeah. them. Oh, well. Life goes on. Right. That's what was kind of cool about going down to that alignment shop man there's so much history and stuff because that family's been here forever they're all talking uh, the video of a line in the 35 i walked over on the other side of the shop there and they've got a a big press and it was made to straighten wheels on cars but hell you can look at it and tell it some of it was like world war ii vintage and that's one crazy. Of them was like, yeah, I remember that's all my grandpa did was sit out here and straighten wheels on this thing. And then yeah. uncle did the alignments and yeah, they built race cars. That reminds me of old John turning wrenches 85. He's got one of those lawnmower shaft straighteners. You know, like if you run over a log or something with your lawnmower, it's going to bend the shaft and <laughs> it's going to vibrate more than a 13 year old backpack, you know? But anyway, yeah. that was pretty neat seeing it, though. You know, it's like, oh, man, I hadn't I ain't even seen one of those. I just yeah. used a hammer and a laser and hit it. You he's, know? Like, he's like a uh, like lawnmower fucking whisperer. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had an yeah. actual damn tool. Yeah. That's pretty damn cool. John knows his lawnmower now. That's for damn sure. I just it, it, I find it hard sometimes to watch a fucking hour-long video on you fixing a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you gotta love him though. Mom used he, to lock me out in the shed out there fixing the lawnmower. She'd bring me some potted meat, and mustard, and a couple biscuits. I told, you, I told you I'm gonna figure have to go over there and see if he's got me a lawnmower for sale. Well, he's got them, he's gotta have them. Do Who's the guy that does the lawnmowers? My buddy John and Turner Riches 85. Oh, okay. He's down Do a collab when you get over there. Yeah, he's down the road from me. I don't, I don't put them hung out with him a couple, three or four times. We just didn't film nothing. Well, you need to film something next time. I mean, it's it's yeah. okay. Yeah, we yeah. was just busy. We was busy. You know what I'm saying? It was like when we needed a cameraman. <laughs> right. Sometimes you ain't got time for that shit. You know, it's like half the time fucking doing. I need to go out here and. I don't know how many things on my truck out here. Some of it ain't gonna get recorded because I ain't got time. I need, to, I need to hurry up and do this. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it's like fuck. Just ain't got time to do it. Okay, you I'm know. subscribed to Turning Wrenches '85. Okay. Yeah. 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 He, John's oh, cool guy. He can. He can. If there's a lawnmower sitting on the side of the road, he cannot pass it up. If he had to carry it on his back, he will pick it up and carry it home on his back. He got a healing plume too, all the time. With the Billy Bass, he's got to have that lawnmower. Yeah. It's free money. You can't pass it up sometimes. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking, like I, did, I just said, I'm going to go over there and buy one from him here pretty soon. So. Fellas, I will catch you guys on the next one, man. Right. Have a good one. Have Listen fun. And all right. Oh, yeah. Teach those it's kids right. something. Yeah. We're going to try to try to I'm get us something done tomorrow. <laughs> Mondo Billy. Right. Mondo Billy will be back Bondo in full force, bud. Yep. Bondo see Jimmy. you guys later. We'll yep. see. Bye now. Bye. I mean, bye. 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 <laughs> yeah. You're, uh, you're oh, so Lord. jumped on that chipper pile, and I was thinking, oh, that hurt my back. <laughs> but, I saw him jumping on that. didn't admit to it. And it's not a pile of leaves. That's not going to give. Dude, we was uh, we was in uh, we was in Oklahoma City when we broke down coming back from California, and we we would got a hotel room, you know, and and uh, uh, we went and parked the car and was bringing our luggage up. And there was a pile of snow like that where that uh, uh, 
plow or whatever done plowed it up in the parking lot big plow big pile over here big pile over there and, and they can't move it nowhere they just pile it up i went over there and jumped on one of them piles of snow thinking i was gonna skin and no it was just like it was harder than that fucking pile of fucking wood he jumped on where'd you get that yeah, he, did, he, did, he hurt his back on that he, he was sore the next day but he didn't admit to it i know i could see when he hit where did you, where'd you get that bootleg clock at, Woody? That's the one you mailed me. Did I mail you, you no clock? You made yeah, that. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't either. No, no. Remember the one you mailed me? Oh, yep, wow. he made that and sent it to you. I remember that. I know, Woody. You, yeah. wanted the big, you wanted the big one. Yeah, yeah. And I sent you some letters for your other clock. I said, hey, you try to use these letters and make your other clock. Another project that I need to. Some of that shit yeah. barely got moved over here. To you know what I mean? You know all the shit. So now you need to send out an order one. You need to send out an order one. You need to send hog shooter one. Make some more. I, I get I moved. Got, I'll make some more stickers, but I got, I got a, I've got everything packed up. I got a bunch of projects going on. Man, I got a hundred projects lined out. I'm so damn busy, it's unreal. I got a hundred going on and I need a, a hundred more to do to start. I haven't had my other phone though with all the memory because I don't have to worry about what the fuck I'm recording. If I need to lay the phone down, I ain't gotta start it back. I just grab the phone and go back to recording. I'll stop talking for a minute and talk to somebody, okay, and then I just go and edit it out real quick. It's helping me out a lot, you know what I mean? Just for you know, same time. have you seen my last couple of videos where I put the chapters in it? How do you? I don't know if you, you know, notice or not. But, um, just look at the look at the description of the video, and it'll show you how I did it. It's easy. It's really easy. I can't believe I haven't been doing it for a long time. There, I haven't done it. I've seen a lot of people that do do it. A lot of my videos really don't lend themselves to chapters right now, but some may later on. I seen you do the same video twice, two cameras. The chapter yeah. video, yeah. jump on the pile. I was like, "Damn, I just watched this one, didn't I?" Oh, it was a different. Yeah. Video. <laughs> <laughs> different angle. There, fifteen minutes. I can't get that. <laughs> it gave me more uh, material to put on YouTube, though. So if you got two cameras, use them. Hey, I'm just fucking with you, buddy. You spoke with me. In 15 minutes, I can't get back in my life. <laughs> All the ads. <laughs> I'm yeah, to I hear you. Do what, John? I'm trying to update the firmware on my Acaso camera, right? So I got that Acaso app, and mm -hmm. then you hook it to the camera, and then it says, you know, firmware update. Well, first, mm -hmm. when you connect to the camera, you got to change the Wi-Fi on your phone to talk to the camera, right? So you do mm -hmm. that. I see the camera, and it says firmware update. It's a uh, click download. It says to download this, you need to switch to you need to switch networks. So go back to settings, switch back to my regular Wi-Fi, and then go back, and it won't download because it says you got to switch networks, and I already have, and I so I'm in in like a do loop where it's not working. I, oh. I can't figure it out. Huh. And I don't have the, have the. I've got the name of the, the the file. I don't I don't know if I could download that file, you know, normal ways off the internet, and then just put it on the yeah, the card and the camera and launch it from there somehow. I just I'm kind of frustrated, and I think that may solve some of my audio issues because my firmware is like a 2022 version on the camera, and there's a 20 right. a link. 2023 firmware out there every time i every time i try to do it it says it's a virus and even though it's not a virus so uh, they removed the app from the the play store the google play store so now you can only download it from their website and every time i try to do it it says hey you know you can't do it because there's a virus so i haven't downloaded their their software to my cell phone yet to be able to train or connect to it wi-fi like you're talking about right so maybe i'll take yeah. that app off the phone and then try to get it again yeah you know, i mean i'm sure it's okay i just don't know why they removed it from play store 
something, something they didn't like about it. Is yours an iPhone or no? No, it's Android. Oh, okay. So it's in it's in a different spot. I got it. So I just want to try but, to do but, that. I like the camera, but the audio is trash. Right. There's something wrong with it. Otherwise, Google Play Store would never removed it from their Play Store. Right. And and that's the only reason why I haven't downloaded it to use all those extra features that it supposedly has. So I can't tell you anything about it because I don't I don't have it installed. I guess yeah, I'll, I'll have to play with it some more. It's kind of frustrating, you know. It should it should work, but it doesn't, you know. Tears, gang. Tears. Tears. Hey, here's a. I, I made a little uh, video snapshot so I could show you basically how I do my chapters. It's real easy. That's a good looking clock, buddy. Yeah, you got the chrome. That's a. It is a it nice. It is a good looking clock. clock. It worked out pretty it good. good. Yeah, I love it. See that right there? Yeah. This is you know your your basic description. Zero 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 is the start of the video. You just tell it what you want it to say when someone points on it, and then you go to the next part of the video that has uh, something that happens that you want to call it something weird. Like yeah, my hitting son the head. Broke, my son, my son broke just, his back, jumped on the fucking pile of wood. <laughs> <laughs> you just I haven't tried it on a short yet, but you know. So you put that in the description and you, you just find yep. the parts should, and then you, you just fill that, that in. Oh shit, that's easy. You should make that it's a short easy. Wood. Yeah. You should make that a short and wood. It, it, that pile of wood. And then there you go. You got chapters in. You look professional like everybody else. Yeah. I, I like it because I, I've got time lapse on one of them. I said time lapse, and then on another time stamp, I put more time lapse. That way they can just skip over those and watch only the little things that they want to watch in the video. Right. You know, because nobody wants to watch freaking, you know, six minutes of time lapse. I do. I watch it, I watch it all, Woody. I do, I watch too. It. I do, too. I watch the ads, too. Unless I don't know you and I don't care, I watch the ads. I'll skip. I, I find myself... Reaching for the remote one. I'm watching your video, out of order, hog shooter, robber. I, I, can't, I can't skip the video. I mean, that fucking ad. I leave it alone. Yep. <laughs> Let it play. Anything I watch, you automatically get credit for because I have the premium. So even though I don't watch the ads, you get credit for me watching the whole video. I can make a thousand dollars a month. Let it play. Shit. I wish. Robert's probably making a thousand bucks a month. What's he got? Like ten channels? Yeah. I wonder All of them over like five thousand subscribers. I bet he's got sixty thousand subscribers. He's supposed to get a play button on that other channel. What he fixed to get? <laughs> yeah. Once he reaches a thousand, and he's monetized, and he's gonna have a play button. If if that's if that yeah. you know if that's a thing. You don't have enough watch hours, but you got enough subscribers. Let's see. Yeah. He has got 51,700 of them. Wow. 50 more, and he'll have a play button. Woody, don't be doing that, Woody. Fuck you, bud. Yeah, I appreciate it. But I love Jim. Good for you. 50,000 subscribers on a channel you're just playing around with. I wish I, I had to figure out where that $1.99 I sent you last week came out of. I don't even know what bank account I had it linked to. I don't know. It was what he sent $10 and $10. You sent $1.99 and it gave me $14.98, I think. Or that's what it says anyway. It says estimated. About their fees and whatever. Yeah. Estimated. Yeah, I meant to put $2, but it took 20 motherfuckers i'll say i'll catch up you back here just a few minutes no i'm just kidding man. i'm messing with you <laughs> i'm keeping up with it because i'm gonna send it back i'm gonna send it all back to you and, and then turn my no cash no no <laughs> i would just tell you what it gave though I, I think i already I already had like 50 something dollars or 60 dollars worth when i first got half monetized you know 
couple of people can are super chatted me or whatever. I, I'm not. I, I'm gonna need to turn it off. I don't need that. No, man. You leave it on there. If someone wants to send you something, let them send it. Yeah, let them send you. That's that's the whole damn purpose of being on YouTube, ain't it? One of them. Well, yeah. you know, I want to it is what it is. I'll be back in a second. I got to get a beer. All right, then. I want, my, I want my content to make me a rich man. If I live long enough, I oh, want yeah, to but... take me another five or ten years. I want this shit to make me rich. And I don't want fucking people just giving me the money. I want you two to give me my well, shit. Right, but a lot of that comes from someone else giving you something because they go, well, hey, man, these people are sending me money. I might as well send them something. I'll you know, it's that. just, it's, it's all part of the process, right? I mean, that's how I look at it anyway. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's it's all part of the game, though. Hell, I finally just added that damn buy my buy me a coffee on my thing. I said, what the hell? Someone wants to buy me a coffee? Yeah. Or two or three? You know, there's the link. Go for it, bud. Yeah. You know, if the money's just burning a hole in your pocket and you want to send me some, I don't mind taking it. All right. You know? I'm not asking for it, but it's there if you want to do it. And that's oh, the way it should be. That's why I put my cash app on my thing, you know what I mean? I, I just, whatever. There's nothing wrong with having it listed, man. It's, it's up to the other person if they want to help or do whatever. I ain't, I ain't telling people to send me money. And I don't, you, what, you don't even hear me right. say... Go subscribe, subscribe to my channel and like and comment and then watch all the ads. I don't like a joke about that shit, you know what I mean? But I don't mean to do that, you know what I mean? I don't go look fucking somebody right. clicks on that give me a thumbs up, you know, over one of y'all or whatever. Y'all gonna get a full view, you know what I mean? And if I don't fuck up and grab the remote and click fucking skip the ads, you get the ad too, because I try I, I was a habit with that shit because for years, for fucking years before I ever got on YouTube and all these years. Like I always fucking, I'm skipping the ad because I don't want to see what you're doing in the video. Even these bigger right. channels that watch some like the Goon Squad or two million some subscribers, they don't get no fucking ad, much ad time out of me because I if it skips, I I ain't, I ain't got time to. I want to see what yeah. you're doing. I, I'm committed to you every week. You know what I mean? Because I've been for four or five years. Yeah. Want to see what's going on? That's it. Well, next time I go live, you can give me a five dollar super chat or something. How's that? Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, the shit goes around, right? I mean, it, it's what we're here for. Oh, cheers, gang. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Out of order wants to go live sometimes, you know, give him a super chat, you know. It's to, to help him with his other followers to see that, hey, he gets super chats. So, hey, why not give him one? You know, give more than one. It's about building each other up. That's what I'm about. I'm about the community aspect of it. They yeah. say, if I like right, you, I'm going to do everything tide, in my power to help. Tide raises all ships. There you go. I've, I've always, I've always been like that, Woody. I've always helped everybody, supported everybody. Didn't get jealous if somebody got, you know, blew up and didn't talk to us no more or whatever the fuck. I, well, you know, it was like Robert's got fifty thousand subscribers on that channel. I ain't jealous. I ain't mad at him at all. Pretty, yeah, that's good. You know what I mean? You put in the work yeah. and you. Get the algorithm, okay, great. You know what I mean? I, yep. I'm not gonna ask you to try to get on there and shout me out and and uh, you know, hey, won't you tell them to come subscribe to my channel? I don't fuck it, I do it myself. You know what I mean? Yep. I, yeah. I want to get this to myself because you can have a million subscribers and put out one video and only get five hundred fucking thousand views. I want to get I want to yeah. get more that million fucking views. I don't want to subscribe just to subscribe. Right. I know. I hear you. I understand. I, know I, always kinda, I just kind of always pushed it like that and, and never, you know, well, I don't tell them, just say it all the time. Hey, subscribe to my channel. Watch this. Watch that. It's like, well, it'll get there. I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you a secret before I go take a leap. I if, if I come out of 7 Eleven and I see a guy there, he's got a backpack on, he's got a bicycle laying down on the ground, he's sitting up against the side of the 7 Eleven building. And, you know, he's got a beard down to his knees and he's basically a hobo. I'll go up to him and I'll give him whatever change I got in my pocket. If I got 10 bucks, I'll give him 10 bucks. If I got $15 and some change, I'll give him $15 and some change. And yeah. I won't ask for anything. I'll just say, hey, man, you know, good luck with everything. And, you know, I hope everything works out for you and I'll leave. 
And that comes back to me tenfold. Right. It always has. Every time I've donated something like that, I've always found riches come into my life. Yeah. I don't know how it works, but it works. Now I'm going to take a leak. There are no coincidences. It's like what I like to say. I've had people ask me, hey, man, you know, I ain't going to lie to you, man. You buy me a beer? And I'm like, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. You know what I mean? What do you want? You know what I mean? You just want a couple of, you know, I'll buy you a fucking beer. Did some more work on that fence in the backyard, this time on the right rear side. There's like 14 feet of fence that was out. I heard you. I had to. I had to go take a leak, dude. Is that fourteen foot? Oh, like I was listening. I just you couldn't hear me if I replied. Yeah, there was fourteen more feet of fence that was out, and I got all that fixed up. I got some more footage on that. It's probably right. kind of boring, but people will watch it. I'll put it up there. Yeah. I got to put that in. You probably got the lock closed in all the way now, or is that it? Yep, yeah, it's closed in now because there was open spots in the back. Not that anybody would come in, but it don't matter. You want it, you want it closed in for you keep your shit. You feel safer with it closed in, right? I want it closed in because it's you don't, it, you can't really see back there all the time, and you don't want somebody wandering off in the woods from the other side, going in there and fucking with your cars or anything either. He's easy. A couple of years back, a couple of kids must have come in there and they jumped on the roof of a couple of the parking cars, caved the roofs in. Yeah, see, shit like that. If they can't yeah. get through there, if they can't get through there easily, might they can't not get it. through there easily at all now unless they kick some of the pickets out. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. That was time well spent. And in that video, I got some footage of the guys when they were cutting the trees, the big trees down. Yeah, all oh, did the guys up in the bucket truck. So I'll probably put a couple of those clips in there. Yeah. I had I did I did one of them. It's probably been two or three years old or something like that. Where the neighbor was having the tree cut down, and uh, they had the truck and the chipper in my yard and whatever. I didn't I didn't film a lot because uh, they was all Mexican and they don't, none of them spoke fucking English and I didn't speak enough Spanish. I speak, I speak some, but not enough. And so I didn't, I didn't go out there and film a lot of it. You know what I mean? It kind of felt. I still I, I still felt the YouTube weird part of it. Walking around with a camera, you know what I mean, and talking to a camera. I, I still didn't do that, you know. Right. So I was just a few shots of them and this and that, and then completely getting the trunk down to the ground, and that was it. But well, the guy that was in the bucket, I was watching him, and he was chainsawing, and I was like, "Oh, look, he's left-handed. You know, he's using the chainsaw with his left hand." And I'm watching him for a while. And then he's using the chainsaw with his right hand. He was ambidextrous with the chainsaw. Uh, yeah, I I ain't that good. I ain't that good, and I don't. I hadn't. I ain't had a bunch of experience with a a gas powered chainsaw because every time I try to start my shit, it won't run. And I got I got two electric chainsaws, and they start every time I plug it in. You know what I mean? But you give me that right there, and I am hell with a fucking. It's like a eighteen inch chainsaw, but I'll cut a fucking thirty inch tree down. You know what I mean? With that fucking electric piece of shit and cut it all up with it. I've done it. You know, fucking trees fell on the house or the other house. And my brother bought the gas powered over there. I was already out there with the electric and giving it hell, you know. Damn twenty dollar fucking twenty I think it's twenty dollars at Harbor Freight or something like that. And one I bought off a marketplace for fifteen dollars five years ago. Hmm. I grabbed them before I grabbed that fucking and, and the weed eaters, are, I don't have a problem with weed eaters a lot more. When it comes to, I always come with a chainsaw. It's fucking, yeah, I had a problem getting it started and getting it running or back running or I choked it and I shouldn't have choked it or what, you know what I mean? Whatever I did. And that fucking electric chainsaw always fucking works. Yeah, I thought about getting one of those, but I, I got the saws all with a pruning blade and that's all I've needed for cutting all this. Oh, yeah. That's good. Trees, down and 
yeah. I'm too old to start using the chainsaw. I've seen, you know. Yeah. That's uh, the chainsaw. I think was what, what is the chainsaw and the table saw. Yeah. A couple of, uh, <clears throat> The more dangerous tools, even the hand circular saw. Yeah. I was talking with a hand circular <laughs> saw, and it jammed up in the wood, and it went zing, and it, oh, it yeah. threw that freaking saw right at my face. Yeah, you know, you gotta watch it. To it. It was all I could yeah. get smacked in the teeth with that thing. Yeah. There, there, you got a oh, kickback, like a big table saw. You go to say, go to fucking uh, rip a piece of plywood. Don't stand behind it. You know what I mean? Is that motherfucker kick back right in your stomach? You know what I mean? You you got to to the yeah. Let it, if it let, yeah, you got to let it go. You got to be in a position where all you got to do is let the shit go. You know what I mean? Ends <laughs> off of it. And, That's why. In uh, in shop class in school, we had like a thirty-six inch bandsaw, yeah. and I used Ooh, that bandsaw damn. to yeah. cut. To, to rip wood down instead of the table saw because the band saw won't kick back. Yeah, right. No, it's safe. No. Lost. I fucking use one. I, I use one. That, when I worked at the poster shop, I used one of all the fucking time because the lady, the lady was always coming up with something. She'd come in there and say, she showed me a picture in a magazine. Can you build that? I'm like, uh, how tall you want it? How? Because I'm looking at a little picture and she kind of come up with some kind of, and I go in there and. And yeah, I use a fucking damn uh, uh, saw like that all the time. Uh, yeah, get, get perfect, perfect cut yeah. or whatever you're cutting. You want to pull back off of it? You want to just let it go and just let it sit there for a minute. Turn the fucking thing off and go back to it. You know. I love my Rikon, man. I've got a Rikon. It goes up to fourteen inches bandsaw. Yeah. yeah. And you always cut like outside the line. That way you can. I've been looking for a good bandsaw, and I, the Rikons, I think, those are supposedly really good tools, aren't they? They're they're very good. I got mine from uh, Woodcraft, or I, I guess you can get them from Rockler too. But I, I don't know if you watched um, Dancing's videos. In one of those, he got a Walker Turner. Old oh band. hell, yeah. those are even better, but they're expensive. I want, a, I want a small one. I want a small one, a handheld bandsaw with the fucking table thing. You know what I mean? I want a small one. Well, I, I, I mean, oh, they make the little small nine inch. Got from uh, Harbor yeah. Freight. I want, I, want I want the handheld with the, with the. I want to be able to handheld that motherfucker, and then I want to be able to put it in the in the device. Pipe. Yeah, that's what Hog Shooter did. Yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what he's I got a nice little setup. Yeah, I like to have something like that. I priced that out at Harbor Freight. That's uh, it's tempting for me to buy stuff from Harbor Freight. I got their card. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and every time I buy stuff, you know, I buy stuff and then pay it off here and there, and it doesn't even hurt. Right now, there's zero balance on my account. How much is it? I'm going to keep it that way. You know, I, I'm only buying stuff I need. You know. That's what I've been. Instead of buying stuff I wanted or whatever, a yeah. couple of years back, I said, "Look, I'm only going to buy stuff that I need." Like when I was at this swap meet, I got a set of snips. Well, I have a set sure. of snips, but when I was helping my son do his dryer venting, those snips were trash. They weren't cutting that well at all. So I found this almost new pair up there for five bucks. I said, "I got to buy these," and the shit of it is, I have a new set of three left cut center and right cut with snips right the yellow damage. handles and the yeah yellow i use the yellow handles yellow yeah, i use the yellow ones all the time and i can't find the damn things i figured if i buy these i will find the other ones you know and if i find when i find my other ones i'll just give this set i just bought to my son because he doesn't have any you know, I figure he'll get all they'll get all my tools eventually anyway, but in the meantime, like my son has a his claw hammer was one of my home home gifts to him when he bought his house. I bought it at a Goodwill for like two dollars, you know, oh just a sixteen ounce claw hammer with a wooden handle, you know, the regular old hammer. The curved or straight claw? Mostly straight. Uh, curved-ish. I don't like them when they're really curved too much. 
And then like you got the, the smooth ball. face, and then you have the diamond plate face. Right, that's the smooth face. But I bought yeah. something else um, at the thrift store the other day. It was a Stanley Fat Max uh, tape measure. Glass, shank hammer. Oh, the hammer? Hammer. It was like a 17 ounce or 19 ounce, something like that. Yeah. But a real long handle with a waffle face. The waffles, yeah. It was ten bucks, and you get ten percent off if you pay cash. So, is what that's like a good $9, deal. Nine dollars and something. Shit, I will buy that stuff all day long for that price. Yeah, yeah. that's a real good deal. I feel like an old man because I go to that restore store like two times a week. But there's yeah. a restore there, and then there's the Ollie's Bargain Barn. It's like a closeout store. Yep, we have one of those Ollie's. Yeah, I yep. go in there all the time. So. I, I hit the two of those stores. I love those waffle hammers, the waffle face hammers, mm -hmm. but it's hard to find them used, you know, and they're expensive. Well, I but, looked this uh, hammer up new. It was like $30 new. So I said, well, let me, I can't not buy it for that. So how much was the saw at Harbor Freight, the band saw with the stand? The stand you can't buy, know. the stand he bought from some other place. Okay, the thing at Harbor Freight, it was under two hundred bucks. I want to say one hundred and fifty, yeah. maybe. It was a Bauer, wasn't it? Like a Bauer. Yeah, I can't remember or, which one it was. I bet it's. I bet the, the metal, the metal bands, all thing. I bet, they yeah. I bet they got it on eBay. And I watched another one of the channels. I watched of uh, RAC Garage. He's got one in his shop, and he uses it kind of like Hog Shooter does to cut that metal. And, you know, if you have to cut. It's a nice saw. I, I wish I had one. I don't. I just have the wood bandsaw and, I don't and an know angle grinder. <laughs> if I need one of those right yet, I might later on. I'll, I'll buy it. And I've seen so many people do everything with an angle grinder. Yeah, I just use an angle grinder on everything. I've got some. I've got chainsaw blades for an angle grinder. <laughs> you know, I haven't used them yet, and I'm afraid to, but I've got them. My son used it. There's a, some kind of concrete cutting blade for angle grinder. And when we when he did the flooring in his basement, part of the concrete floor was poured just a little bit too high near where the door was that goes to the backyard. Where if he put the flooring over that, the door would have hung up on it. So he used the angle grinder and this some kind of diamond blade, and we just went over it and sanded that concrete down a bit. Yeah. And got it smooth enough. And then when he put his laminate flooring over top of that, I mean, not laminate, luxury vinyl plank floor over top of that, it was fine. And then the door wouldn't hang up on it. Yep. Otherwise, that was a deal breaker. You know, there's no way you could put the floor there if the door was going to hang up on the floor every time you opened it. Right. I just use a, a saw and saw off the bottom of the door because usually the bottom of the door has got enough meat running across it, at least an inch, to where you can take anywhere up to about three quarters of an inch off the bottom and still be solid all the way across the bottom. And but then we would have had to move the threshold up and everything. This way it was easier because this piece of floor was higher anyway. So it kind of yeah. needed to be yeah. down, and down and it worked out great. Of course, that, that, that was the house he sold, you know, helped him do all this work on the house and then he sells it. But the work we did, you know, helped raise the value of the house. Like had a, he built this whole wall worth of entertainment center things for his TV. It had shelves and everything, you know, floor to ceiling and the full width. Built it all out of, you know, cabinet grade plywood and put it all together in there cheers gang cheers and then cheers. we built sliding doors for the front of it out of one by sixes and pocket screwed it all together and used um like the barn door rolling hardware yeah and that was kind of a pain because when we put it all together the doors were heavy enough that when they closed the gap wasn't parallel. You know, it got wider at the bottom. So we had to push the tracks up a little bit, you know, and 
either I can't remember if we elongated the holes or drilled new holes. <coughs> we lag bolted it, you know, those things into the wood structure. And but we got it so when the doors closed, there was no gap, they were perfectly plumb. Like yeah. I always say, if it was easy, everybody'd be doing it. Yep. I'll show you my latest score here in just a minute. Or at least I thought it was a score. Okay. <laughs> what kind of what kind of temperatures y'all got outside? We got six sixty one tonight. Hello? What's that? Howdy, howdy, howdy. Uh, I said, what kind of temperature temperatures do y'all have tonight? I said it's 61 here. Uh, 41. I don't know. Let me 41 check. feels like 36. 40, 41 feels like 36. That's cold. Let's see. Tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> high tomorrow, 56. Highs in the in the mid-50s all week. Hey, look, Friday, Friday I was coming home. I've been working all day and didn't have no lunch and kind of felt bad and I was going to stop at the Dollar General store and the motherfuckers were closed up here, dude. They had, they didn't have, and they didn't have the doors locked. They had the metal fucking gr the doors was locked and then the metal screen come down, you know, and, and I, dude, I felt so bad, dude. I started, I wanted to stop and make a video, but I just felt too bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Closed motherfuckers. They were, dude, it was like fucking four or five o'clock on a Friday night. It's like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. It's 67 here. Oh, shit. Rain. It's like a heat wave. Should the heat's running in the house right now? I just cut this on over here a little while ago because it was getting chilly. Thirty-five and snow. Thirty-five snow. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Granny's that. got it all. For She's got all sake. the COVID. For fuck's sake. I get Robert, thirty-five. Where'd Robert go? I get thirty-five. Thirty-five and snow this time of year. My fucking wee wee don't want even want to come out. <laughs> Robert, I gotta work early in the morning too, bud. You know. Start coming up on these lives. I okay. am going to quit YouTube. We're fixing to shut her down so we can make your wife happy tonight, Woody. And I, I'm fixing to go outside and do a couple things anyway. So, oh, she doesn't care how late I'm up tonight. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I was just messing with you. Eleven, 11 o'clock. Yeah. We're cutting it. Oh, come on, man! Fair come warning. On, man. Come on, man! Fair warning. Dang it, Jimmy! I got oh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Shit, I need to do. I wish I could stay on there all the time, but I can't go live like fucking Sugar does. She's live like where she's just live more than Jimmy C is. Let's put it that way. She'll go live on her drive to work or back. That's cool. I, 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 I just I, I, I got sometimes I got to damn concentrate on the road or I got shit I got to do. I, right. I was on one of her lives one time for a couple of hours. She Got home and just people were on there and everybody was carrying on. And <laughs> she should be making all the bucks then, right? She probably ain't she's live be, every day. She probably gets she's probably copyrighted. Making, gets copyrighted all the time. She's probably making a thousand bucks a night. You get, you get copyrighted every. All you do is live. You get copyrighted. You gonna make nothing. I'm I just kidding, Grammy. Yeah, she don't care. She just fucking plays on it, talks to everybody, whatever. I just think sometimes I, I, I drop in whenever I can. Oh, I do too. I do too. But sometimes it's like, fuck, I ain't got time. I got to do this. I got to do that. I drop in. I say hey every now and then, just to let her know I'm still kicking. I have to do that to a bunch of people, so it's hard for me to. Watch everybody's. 
Oh hell, I went through my damn my list and uh I checked everybody and everybody that wasn't subscribed to me or hadn't subscribed to me, I cut them off. Oh yeah. I told you I've been doing I that. On, I've been doing that on my Instagram. Yeah, subscribe now, Woody. I've been doing that on my How Instagram. How many channels are you following? Um let me see. I'm following would, you, John. I would do yeah. I would do that on my Instagram because I was I was following like like sixty five hundred people, and I only had like thirty three hundred people following me. So I started fucking. Hey, you ain't following me. You're gone. You ain't following me. You're gone. And I, I I noticed that every time I open up Instagram and it refreshes, like I would say ninety seven percent of the time, the first thing that pops up is somebody that's not following me. You know, before I like, before I like it and say I like that and scroll on to it, I click on it on their name and go and it's like, okay, you need they're not even following me. But like ninety to ninety nine right. percent right. of the time, every time I open up Instagram, the first person there is not following me, and I've been getting rid of them, and I'm getting close to evening it out now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't follow me, I ain't gonna follow you. Fuck it, I, you know, I'm not gonna like your shit, and I don't even know you're not even following me. You know. Uh, I'm following 91 on YouTube right now. 91 channels? Yep. I think and, I have uh, like 900. Yeah, I don't... You can go through and you can look at your lifetime on your analytics to see who is subscribed to you and when they subscribe. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean they're still subscribed, but at least they did right. subscribe at one point. And anybody that wasn't on that list that I'm subscribed to, I kicked them off. I just got lazy. I don't have time to do that right now. I might do that at some point. Yeah. It's just a support thing. I want to support people that support me. You know, that's why I'm subscribed to you and Buzzard and Robert and Hog Shooter and, you know, Native and a few other people. Don't you call a buzzer, you motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, well, fuck the why wouldn't they subscribe to you? You know, oh, there's one nice. channel, I ain't going to mention who they are, but I watch them all the time, and they're that's not even subscribed to me. Like, it's the same fucking thing on TikTok and Instagram. You know what I mean? It was like, fuck, you won't follow me on TikTok, but I'm following you, and you, you know, you, you see... You see some people like on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, they got a bunch of subscribers, but they ain't subscribing to nobody or they ain't following nobody. And it's like, what? Oh, so what, what you did, you built your little shit, and anybody that subscribed to you, you know, or followed you or whatever, you don't follow, you can follow them back. You know, you don't want to see their shit. You know, all you care about is focus on what you're doing. You're not supporting anybody. Right. And I understand the bigger channels. I don't. I don't unsubscribe from them because I know that you know. You know they're either. big, like like zip ties. I know he's not subscribed to me, and I don't care. Yeah, I you know, because I know he's a bigger channel. You know, and I like his stuff. Don't give a fuck so, either. You know about that. It don't matter right. how subscriber you got. That's so, not. Don't mean nothing to me. No. Um, if he had a hundred subscribers, I know he'd probably be subscribed to me, but he well, don't. He's almost four hundred thousand. So I watch his video, I watch video and might not even comment, you know what I mean? Whatever, just let it go, you know. Foster, you gotta show me. Okay, cut it back off. Bandit, I said thank you. Bandit. Band bandit's awesome. He's got a lot of energy, that's for sure. He does. My dog loves watching Bandit. She just jumps up at the TV. I'm afraid she's going to knock my TV off. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'll throw squirrels up there, squirrel videos, just to aggravate her, you know? Yeah. But, You're going to get it one day. It's going to hit that fucking screen with that nose. Yeah. Don't get mad at her now. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess if we squirrels. hear like a big ass loud ass noise, like it's something falling on the floor, it'll be the fucking TV. Hey, Foster, you know what? 
What? Nothing. All right. Like old Foster there, I'm subscribed to both of his channels. He's got two. Foster, you've been cheating. He's got two of them. I didn't know Foster had two channels. You've been cheating. Yeah, who's dead? And the other ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dead head. They just turned me loose from the nervous hospital. It's there, though. He does have it. He's got two channels that I know about. Big Sleazy and Foster. Foster Bread and three and Big Sleazy. I'm telling Grandma. I'm telling Grandma that's what I'm gonna do. You're getting too big for your breeches. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's not fine. I'm telling her as soon as we get off here tonight, I'm texting her and telling her. I got the transcripts. One of them has his fish, what, what his doing? trout <laughs> for a uh, logo picture, and his other one has a wrestling guy on it. You have to yeah, Steve put, Austin. Yeah, the, the other one's Steve trying Austin. to trout in the box. Yeah, I'm that pussy Steve trout. Austin's on there. You have to put the link in there, chat, Woody. What? I'm stunned over here. Oh. Hey, I am too, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right to be stunned a little bit every now and then. I mean, you work hard for a living. You know, you can be stunned one day out of the week. That's the way I look at it. Right. Yeah. Unless you're Jimmy C, and then you're going to be stunned like every day of the week. Is Jimmy live again? Is he live tonight? He usually goes on Sundays. When is it? He, he got locked out of his account today. Or Mike. Mike uh, see it. Oh, he's on there with Mike. No. Uh, it says upcoming live. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, what the fuck, Mike's on. He's he's live. I said hi to him earlier. No, it says it says waiting for Jimmy C. It's ten thirty live tonight. No, what what the fuck, Mike posted a short today and said Jimmy C. was locked out of his account and he wouldn't be back until until his wife got home with his phone. Oh no. Oh hell. That's what he said today. And there's a one live waiting for ten thirty five. But I, Jimmy C. <laughs> He got rejected. Well, that's <laughs> not good. No. How do you block your own hell? I just seen the short. I was clicking through shorts and fucking what the fuck Mike said that. Yeah, that's not good. Said he had to wait till his wife got home with the other cell phone. John, what's Robin up to tonight, bud? She's down in North Carolina with one of her friends. They're doing some scrapbooking stuff. So she went out to... Dang. Uh, so she drove from Maryland to North Carolina? Oh, yeah. We drive everywhere. That's why the car has 340,000 miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go 115 yeah. miles each way to a swap meet. She goes down there to North Carolina. And then whenever we go to New York, it's 400. 50 or 480, 450 something each way. Yeah. It's all good. That's not bad, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's really not bad, you know. And then my other son, he's half a mile around the corner, you know. I could walk there in nine minutes. I've done it before, you know, if I had to. But usually I just drive around the corner. Yeah, I would. <laughs> is he into cars? He is. He had that Acura that he sold. Remember we talked about that? And he's got a notchback Mustang with was a four banger. It's got a five zero EFI Turbo. in it. But he hasn't driven it in years. He's almost, you know, life gets in the way, and it needs a little work before we get it back on the road. But we're going to go ahead and do that. It had it blew the head gaskets years ago, and we changed the heads, and we put on GT forty P heads. As a buddy of mine, yeah, the Explorer heads. Yeah, had a set of those that were already done and ready to go. We got a good price on them, and the internet said, "Oh yeah, you can use the regular headers with them." You know, the regular five O Mustang headers. Well, that's you wrong. can, but you 
You have to uh, use the angle to spark plug wires if you do that. You can't even get a socket on some of the one of the spark plugs to get it tightened in there hardly. There's no clearance. And he had it, even that, we put the angled wires on it, kept burning up wires. So one of his buddies, in fact, it's the guy that bought the Acura from him, there's a magic set of headers that are designed for GT40P heads in a 5.0 Fox body. That and sounds sold, like a big hoobla. It is. He sold him a set of headers for 50 bucks, so we got the right kind of headers for it. We just have to swap the headers, and because the car was sitting around for a while, the master cylinder went out. So I keep telling him, hey, let me know. I'll come over and help you. But, you know, he just he got married recently, and, you know, the job and this. He's getting ready to go on travel again. You know how it goes. But I, oh, keep, yeah. I keep bugging him, you know. I said, I'll come over and help you do that. So if we change the headers and put a master cylinder on this thing, it should be okay. It's five-speed, you know, and it's got – Five lug swap on it already too. Somebody five lug swapped it. Yeah. And it's in a satin black. We did the paint job with like twenty cans of <laughs> spray bombs in the yard because he had crashed it at one point and in the left front, and we had to put a fender and a new nose on it. Got it. So when we did that, it was already flat black anyway, but we re. We did it all in satin black this time with spray bombs. It doesn't look bad. I mean, it, it's okay. No. I love spraying flat black. It goes on so good. Just like primer. Right. I don't know about satin black, but flat black works real good. I do a lot of stuff in flat black, like uh, brackets and homemade metal, you know, brackets and things. Yeah. So Scratch is real easy, but it goes on good. We got to do all that, get that going. Does he have any kids yet? No, I don't think they want kids, which is, you know, it's their their thing to do. They're they're the ultimate dinks. Double income, no kids. You just have to keep after him on it. He'll eventually want to have a. I don't know his name, but he'll probably, you know, just get after him. He'll have a John Jr. eventually, you know. Michael, yeah, he'll have a little Michael. Michael Jr., yeah. I'm after my son every day I see him. I talk to him about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to press him on it anymore because, you know, if they want to do it, they'll do it. If not, you know, whatever. That's, that's fine. And his wife, she's – she works in foreign military sales, and she's – you know, when she travel, they send her around the world traveling here and there every once in a while. She just got her master's recently, so she's pretty on the ball. So she's ready to have kids then. She's oh, yeah, got her she master's really already. I hmm. guess, yeah. She she could do a lot from home, you know. Our daughter, that's where all of our grandkids are. We've got like, oh, I don't even want to count. There's uh, four or five of them. You know, I can, right now I'm stunned, but there's at least five of them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm after my sons, you know, hey, we want some more grandkids out of you guys. And, right. They're taking forever. But yeah, I got five grandkids for my daughter. Well, we got two up in New York. You know, that's that's fine. They're precious. I love them. Love when them the, to death. When the buzzer dies, the buzzer dies. That's it. I ain't never. We ain't got nothing. I agree. Right. Yeah, his grave is going to say, go bug yourself. Yeah, that's going to be it. That's you what you say now, but give yourself a couple more years and a few oh, more oh, organs old. later. Too old, but that's it. Organ. <laughs> or uh, give yourself a couple more Oregon or Washingtons later, and we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Buzzard, I'm messing with you, bud. I'm half stunned, so you know, get over it. I don't care. I'm stunned. Get over it. We're going to cut this shit off anyway here in a minute. What the oh, fuck? Come on, Why? Man. Because 
I'm old as Don't fuck be a millennial, man. I thought the fucking tire fell off. If you're going to hit something, you're using the, the Gap-O liner, okay? Don't settle for a substitute. The real thing. It's all going to work for you. And uh, oh, today's cheater. experience, it's about a two-pound shop hammer. So, my question is, end grain hit or side grain hit? End grain I for mean, sure. We'll go with the end grain just because, just because we can. It's harder. You can just tell he's already bored. You can tell he's already beat on that fucking piece of wood if you want him to. You ever seen those floors they make out of end grain wood? Oh, yeah. They're hard as hell. Yeah. They had that in the <laughs> on the base. It was end grain. What the fuck was that? I thought a fucking tire fell off. And probably the guys, expensive, too. The guys that play basketball said that floor would bounce different than any other floor. Yeah. Just like the cutting boards. If you get a chance to buy a cutting board, buy one that's in grain. They're so grain. much stronger and more expensive, but they'll last you generations. You ever watch uh there's a guy named Kevin No not Kevin, but Chris with a K. Chris Devo. He's out of Alaska. On YouTube? He does a yeah, he does a lot of woodworking stuff, mostly cutting boards, chartistry boards, bowls. Uh, he made a bowl out of like 15 layers of different hardwoods that he glued together. That were each board was like a eighth to a quarter inch thick, and he made a big block out of it. And he turned a bowl out of it. I'm looking at it right now. He's got holy shit. He's got 150. I'm sorry, 180 thousand subscribers. Oh, I've been with him since he was like 10,000 subscribers. I just subscribed. Anyway, he's, I'm going to check it out. Thanks. The bows that he made, he just recently made them not too long ago. He made a bunch of them and he sold them. They sold for $3,800 each. Damn. Wow. Yeah. And Damn. he sold out of them. You know, the. Um, he's, out, he's out of them. I met up with this guy to buy that. Um, scaffolding safety cage stuff when I was up at the swap meet and he told me he's a retired guy he was a construction supervisor but he's doing woodworking stuff now you know trying to make stuff and sell it and whatever and he was at the one woodworking show and the people were there for multiple days and he said more than one of them was complaining that they couldn't even sell enough to make the $500 cost of the table for those three days he said, I don't know if it's the economy or whatever, because he said he's been to those same kind of shows in the past and bought things for a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, whatever dollars from people. He says, I don't know, you know, maybe the stuff these people are offering was trash or maybe it's not the right market. But if this guy, <clears throat> pardon me, can make a bowl that sells for thousands, you know, he's got the right Yeah. Got the right thing going on. Yeah. This guy here, Chris, he started in his garage and uh, he eventually, he had to move into, he tried to move into a big shop and they denied him for some reason or another. He's up in Alaska. I don't know if it was just uh, the shop he was trying to move into was a friend of his and the friend of his, his boss has said, hell no. So anyway, he's got his own shop now and his own production line and everything else and he's making killer money just doing, you know, custom you know cutting boards some cutting you know you can add stuff to a cutting board like the juice line and right and design. all that kind of stuff right. the wood. he probably chooses his wood carefully so it all looks really nice uh, several different species of hardwood like purple heart and oak and you know a couple of the ebony woods but Anyway, I put his link down there. You, you got to check him out. He's a pretty good guy. He's pretty humble, too. So, it's a good channel. Yep. I don't know the guy. I just watch his stuff. 
but he seems pretty humble to me. But I've been watching him forever too, you know. Yeah, there's a few, few channels I've been like that too, you know. Like Goon Squad or whatever. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they've had some, they've had some stuff that I was like, fuck, I don't care nothing about watching y'all do that. You know what I mean? Just a few videos, but most of most of them I watch a lot of it. But I don't comment. I don't even give them a thumbs up. I just fucking watch it. Y'all already rich. You know what I mean? It ain't helping a bit. Yeah. I but really I like, like this show. My wife I, likes it too. I get a little irritated. The wife yeah. The wife yeah. files. I, I turned you on to that, Woody, didn't I? Yeah, you turned me on to that one. I really like it. I've watched all of this stuff. I watch a lot. I like it because he doesn't push an agenda on you. He'll put the information out there and let you make your own decision. What'd I say? Well, like fish. What'd I say? Yeah. Look here. We're picking, uh, we're picking the scattered arrow, fellas. Oh, come on. You got work tomorrow or something? Yeah. I, I appreciate everybody coming into the chat, everybody coming on the panel, Woody, Guzzard, and uh, out of order. And uh, we're going to get off here, but I need, I got a couple oh, things. Come on, man. I got some stuff I need to do. I just got some stuff I need to do. I, I do too, bud. What time you got to go to work? It don't matter. I got stuff I got to do right now. <laughs> All right, bud. <laughs> what time you got to go to work? Okay. I'm quitting YouTube then. 6 a.m. I get up. I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. This is the last live I'm going to ever do. I'm quitting. <laughs> fucking I'm done. I'm going to go fucking All work. Right. I'm going to go live Where's in the monster. monster. I'm, going, I'm going to live in the monastery. I'm gonna fucking be a Jehovah Witness, and I'm gonna come knock. I don't care me. anymore. All in in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be a Jehovah Witness, and I'm gonna come knock yeah, on every door. And yeah, I'm we're gonna, gonna talk about little bitches. We're gonna talk about trolls. We're gonna talk about you know, mother, yeah. mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would do whatever you gotta do, but yeah. Well, we'll go we'll live again, Woody. Don't worry, but fucking uh, uh, Jimmy C is probably live. Can you do me a little favor? Yes. Uh, can you buy me some beer? Beer? Yeah. Oh. Oh, come on. No way. Can you buy me some beer? Buy you what? Some beer. What are you, nuts? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> no. Beer? <laughs> yeah. I have a hottie back at my tree house. A hottie back in your tree house, huh? Can you buy me some beer? Beer? Yeah. Beer? Yeah. Come on, I'll pay for it. I'll, you just have to get it from me. Oh, I didn't think you had the balls. Yeah. Come on, sixth grade's like nothing but pressure. Yeah. No one believes me though, but my grandparents sent me here to get some beer because they're like really sick and stuff. But can you guys buy me some beer, please? All right, then grab me some rubbers. Oh, of course not. You're too little for drinking. You're a Boy Scout, man. Come on, it's not like I'm trying to sell you some freaking cookies. <laughs> Can you buy me some beer? No. Come on, help a brother out. <laughs> yeah, Can you buy me some beer? Buy me some beer? Yeah. Huh? Come on. Can you buy me some beer? Buy you some beer? Yeah. Stuff, what do you want? Uh, beer. How much? Six pack, 12 pack, what? Six. There you go. Here's your beer. Okay? Gee, thanks. Okay. Have a good one. It's very not being quoted, Dad.